Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the world famous Comedy Store main room for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hensclair. Hi, everybody. Make some fucking noise. Come on. Make noise. You getting your food. Make noise. You in the corner. Make noise. Comedians, make some fucking noise. Yeah. Look how much better the comedians are than you peasants. Fucking rock. Call yourselves a fucking audience. I'll hope that you get better. Welcome to the number one live podcast in the world. Look who it is. It's the great Brian Redman. What's up, guys? And everybody. Uh, the great Ryan J. Ebel drawing tonight's episode, The House Artist. While you all sit there being lazy, an actual artist is drawing a picture of tonight's episode. Incredible. We are live streaming. Everything's out. If you follow us on Twitter, social media, those links are out right now. We are streaming live in VR 360 globally. Which is good, because this is a very global episode we have for you tonight. Um, <clears throat> I'm pumped about a lot of things, Brian. Brian's watching the live stream right now. This, uh, this weekend, I go to the Denver Comedy Works, for those of you listening to the live stream right now. Denver Comedy Works and a lot of other fun places coming up. Next Friday, we are in uh, Boston. Kill yeah. Tony is in Boston, doing the Boston Comedy Festival. I'm really excited about that. Austin, Cap City, I'm in. Don't stand up after that. Sunnyvale, California. Rooster Tea Feathers. I've done that place before. I'm going back there again. I'm doing La Jolla November 10th and 11th at the Comedy Store, making my long-awaited return to San Diego. But catch us in Boston next week, doing Kill Tony, the number one live podcast in the world. Blasted. Week one is in the books for the NFL, guys. The NFL ended this week. How about the, or started this week? It just began, and uh, week one is in the books. But it's not too late to get closer to the game you love with DraftKings. One week fantasy football. This Sunday, DraftKings is hosting a $100,000 pick'em contest that is totally free to enter. Pick'em is the newest way to play one-week fantasy football. Drafting your team is faster than ever. DraftKings is organized into eight tiers. All you have to do is select one player from each tier. Choose between public contests with big cash prizes or private contests where you can compete against a group of your friends. DraftKings also has beginner and casual contests where you will play against people of similar skill level. The best part is, you get to draft a new team each week without any commitment. So go to DraftKings.com now and use promo code CHANT to play in DraftKings free contest with $100,000 in total prizes this Sunday. That's promo code CHANT, C-H-A-N-T, to compete for your share of $100,000 in total prizes. The contest is totally free to enter. Why wouldn't you try? The game inside the game. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. One more question for this audience. You want to look good in your underwear and be comfortable, right? But that perfect balance is hard to find. Don't sacrifice style or comfort. Check out MeUndies.com and find the best pair of underwear in the world. MeUndies will be the most comfortable pair of underwear you will own. Made from a sustain sustainably sourced. All right. Naturally soft fabric that is three times softer than cotton. Ultimate feel-good undies for when you want to feel naked but not be naked. For the fellas, me undies, diamond sealed pouch cradles your jewels and gives you your stuff the support it needs without feeling too tight. Ladies will love the soft, eco-friendly fabric, so soft and touchable. It's a 100% satisfaction guarantee. They guarantee you will love your undies or your money back. Right now, me undies has an exclusive offer just for our listeners. Get 20% off your first pair and free shipping. Dude, I liked it so much that I actually used that coupon code and bought some for my girlfriend. I like saw that. You periscoped yeah, it. Yeah, periscoped it. That's how much I like it. And MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear that they will even give you a 100% satisf satisfaction guarantee. You order a pair, and if you don't love your first pair, get a full refund. This is a no-brainer to try. 20% off free shipping and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. What are you waiting for? To get 20% off free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get the best and softest underwear you will ever own, go to MeUndies.com slash kill. That's MeUndies.com slash kill. This is a limited time offer. So what are you waiting for? Start wearing the best underwear of your life. It changed my life. It's time to let MeUndies change yours. Go to MeUndies.com slash kill right now. Are you guys ready to start tonight's motherfucking episode? 
every single week, I guarantee to you that I always have my funniest friends on this show. Always the best comedians in the world. This week is no different. Put your hands together for Greg Fitzsimmons, Moshe Kesher, and Jimmy Carr. Err, err, err. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. Yes. The great and powerful. Here, everybody, scoot down a little, scoot down a few inches. I don't want Greg to be that close to uh, strangers that get pulled out of the bucket. Yeah, Moshe, keep coming. Let's go tight. Hi, guys, welcome. Jimmy Carr is back, everybody. <laughs> Global superstar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I feel, as, as we all do, I think we all agree we're better than this. That's true. <laughs> I agree uh, as well. I am so happy that I have the kind of reputation to be able to book you guys somehow on a big live podcast where it's not scripted, not produced, and anything can happen. Well, he was running that we're better than this line to me backstage. He thought, I was wondering how it worked. And it worked really well. It was good, Jimmy. Thank it you. worked. Moshe Kesher, you're back. You just got back from Burning Man? Just back from Burning Man, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Which, Literally and figuratively, where were you when the guy uh, threw himself in the fire? I wasn't there. You know, uh, I, I've been going to Burning Man for such a long time that uh, once in a while. What, did I pause there for a second? Sorry, yeah, I Burning thought Burning Man, Man was like, a thing, but someone actually threw themselves on a fire. Yeah, yeah. That is a really literal. Yeah. Who the fuck did that? <laughs> some guy that was. Uh, some Tibetan? Guy was, <laughs> a Tibetan guy, yeah. <laughs> They can't. They have a couple of drinks and they just do it. Was he? <laughs> was drinks. he pleased? I mean, I would imagine his face lit up. <laughs> well, there's a series. There's a series of photos of the guy going in, and you really see an emotional arc. It's really sad, but you see an emotional arc because the first photo, he's clearly like still in the mode where the drugs are telling him there's a real good secret for him in the fire. You know, he's like really into it. He's like, I will be the father of dragons. And then <laughs> the second photo, he's like. Totally sober. It's only one second later, but he's yeah. like in the fire going like, oh, fuck, terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. And then the third. He was a baby. Yeah, and then the third is a German police officer from World War II that comes <laughs> in and rescues him. I Red love it. Red Band, the, the comedy killer. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Greg Fitzsimmons, uh, everything's fun with you. I uh, had an absolute blast having you on my big crazy show. We sold out the main room last week. I yeah. did an hour with uh, after Greg and Rogan and a bunch of other that people. That was fun. That was, a, that was a hot crowd. You were unbelievable. Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, you know, it's always good to be in the main room because you can look around at all of these uh, neon faces of people that you don't recognize. <laughs> it's crazy, right? I mean... I get the Marx Bros, but who are the who are these two characters back here? I think that is uh, that there is George Wendt from Cheers. Are you serious? <laughs> no. It seems like it would be like a soupy sales or something. Like to that. the listener at home, guess. the visual see. references are fucking murdering right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You might not think you know what's going on. You guys have all been guests on the show. I think most of the comedians know how it works. I know for a fact there was a lot of new names that signed up tonight. I got that report from the name cutter guy. And, uh, and, you don't uh, know the name of the name cutter guy. Oh, the name cutter guy is Josh Martin, the newest paid regular at the comedy store. He's around here somewhere running around. The producer of Kill Tony. Um, but uh, for those audience members that might not know how it works, uh, over 50 or 60 people, I do believe, wow. signed up for this bucket tonight for the chance to get 60 seconds on this stage. We only get through so many of them, but they sign up before the show. They do 60 seconds. Comedians, maybe it's your first time. You know your 60 seconds is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. That means wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. <laughs> There you go. Very good. You guys ready to start the show or what? Let's do this. Lighting switch. Oh, yeah, we have a band. I almost forgot. I totally forgot about the band. I have so much uh, DraftKings and me undies on the brain. Lights are back on. <laughs> Lighting switch deactivated. Stupid sales on. Uh, I love these guys with all my heart. Truly, truly three of the funniest human beings I know. You know them from this show every single week. Put your hands together for Pat Reagan, Jeremiah Watkins, and Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, The Kill, Tony, Bam. Oh, 
<laughs> oh my god. Well, Immediately I'm, one of my favorite ever. Oh, wow! I would argue that's in very good taste. <laughs> For the audio listeners, they're dressed up as hurricanes and they spit water out and they threw leaves around. They made a bunch of noise. Jeremiah has lightning bolts. They might be the most adorable outfits they've ever worn. <laughs> I'm such, I'm such a positive thinker. Before I saw the name tags, I thought you were just uh, fall. I thought you were autumn. <laughs> and then you turn around and one of you was wearing a fucking Hurricane Katrina name tag. Like, yeah, they have a Katrina and Irma and Jose. I've never heard of Hurricane Jose. It's en route. <laughs> I told you. It's currently blowing right yeah. now. <laughs> you, almost brought, you almost didn't bring us out. I can't believe it. That was one a of, natural one disaster. Closely <laughs> averted. I love it. We're all, everything's in place now. You guys ready to start the show or what? Let's do this! Lighting switch, lighting switch! Pew, pew, pew! All right, here we go. Kill Tony is about to begin. An uninterrupted 60 seconds goes to your first comedian who goes by the lucky name of Jay Whitaker. Um, I'm a single parent with joint custody, so I also qualify as a hostage negotiator. Um, my son, he wants to be an engineer when he grows up, and I think that's just dope, um, because dad tells dick jokes for a living. He wants to be an engineer, that's cool, but it looks like from a, like when we get together, we draw our little cool drawings of space shuttles and aircraft, but if you look at his drawings, it doesn't look like he wants to be an engineer, it looks more like he wants to be a urologist, because all of his shuttles look like a penis. Like, how do I parent that? How do I support that? I'm supposed to be his, cha his father and encourage and develop, and, you know, that childhood development. I don't want to deter it in any way, shape, or form. So I got to be super supportive. I got these dick shuttles on my fridge, y'all. <laughs> but who am I to judge? You might be on to something. Maybe with the bigger balls and, you know, the bigger rocket and boosters, it might fly faster in the deep space. I don't know. I don't understand science, whatever. That's might be an old man in Cape Canaveral, Florida someday, sitting there talking about, you see that in the sky? My son designed that right there. That's the USS Penetrator right there. Jay Whitaker. Right. How's it going? You can stay up. Now we talk to you for a so, bit. Yeah, this is fascinating. So, hang on, you're a, you're a divorced parent? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, well, it's been like fun 10, chatting. Ten years ago. <laughs> Shit happened. Oh, okay. And now... I, I came here from Salt Lake City, which is already weird. We already knew you're yeah, from Salt yeah, Lake. Just by looking at you, we were like, this is a Utah guy right yeah, here. Yeah. So which, Classic. Which, which I'm, one, I'm used to y'all white people, man. Which, um, <laughs> which one of your wives did you break up with? Then? Uh, <laughs> That's why he couldn't quite answer the yes to being divorced. He's like, to whom? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm divorced <laughs> from one of them, but you know, I'm still very married. The great married. thing about the Mormons is you've got options. I mean, yeah, that's what we're... Well, you, you're not a Mormon, though, right? No. No. Jimmy's confused. In England, they just drink more gin and fucking fight it out. They, did, they, don't, they don't break up. That sounds like a good time. Yeah. So, so, they also don't have a space program, so he's unclear on that as well. <laughs> Take that, motherfucker. Go back to where you came from. You moved You're to LA? different. Yeah, yeah. MAGA. How well, Shane, uh, Shane Smith, who uh, was on here uh, yeah. before, he told me to come on. How long uh, have you lived here? Um, I used to live here way back in the day. I was born and raised in a Glendale and Inglewood. Shout out, G-Spot. What's up? Um, G-Spot? Yeah, Glendale. Whoa. That's what, that's what we call it. So, Glendale, Hospital, so 1079. Glen Glendale is like about two inches in and then back. Right. I don't know. And I feel like I've been there but never been there. It's true. And it's I can never find it. I can. I drive around for hours. No, I can never right. find no, it. No, but if you go there, you will notice that sometimes in some areas it smells like assholes, too. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think it exists. Yeah. Seems like, seems like black I guys care. find it easier. What do you do for a living, Jay? Um, I'm also working in the military. Um, I work cybersecurity and. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, it's fucking That's bur what burying me Utah. burying the lead guy over yeah. here. I also work in the military. Yeah. <laughs> I've never you, seen. Is, is it? Can I just double yeah. check? Is it 
the US military or? Yes, the military, yes. Thank the God United for that. Military, yes. I, would, I thought for a horrible second you were going to go, yeah, I'm with the Islamic State, it's going very well. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, Happy 9-11, everybody. No. Jay, you might be the only guy that I've ever seen that works cyber security that could also work actual security. <laughs> well, thank you. How long have you been doing that? Uh, 14 years. That's uh, originally brought, what brought me out to Salt Lake. So is that is that IT then? Yeah. That's a, and do you find that turns the ladies on and then turns them off again? Nah, man. It, it really doesn't. It's like, because everybody always wants to know, like, oh, you, you must fly planes or like do some combat. I'm like, nah, man. I basically make sure my commander can get on Instagram. That's pretty much it. How old's your kid? Oh, he's 10 now. He's 10. Yeah, yeah. Just he's in place. Salt Lake City. Yeah. And, and that's, what? Well, that's where the baby mama is. Nah, well, I mean, I have an ex-wife. No, nah, she's under. Oh. She's in the foundation of my house right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm no longer in Utah. I wish I had a baby mama. That shit is. That shit is less binding. Wait, wait paperwork. Wait, oh, you mean she's an ex-wife, not yeah, a baby mama? There's more paperwork involved. So, oh. she's, so she's bound. Real niggas know that shit. <laughs> Would you say? Real niggas know that shit. That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you beat me too. I was coming out of my mouth, and now I'm like, oh, okay, he's got it. I was going to say some of those words. <laughs> what a, That's no, weird because no. backstage when it's just the three white of us, we said that word a lot. <laughs> 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 no. Can I ask what you, like, I, I, don't, I don't have children, but it's, a, it's got an amazing responsibility and thing to do. What did you, you, you've got this child, what did you call the child? What did you, what did you go for? His name's Dante. Dante. Yeah. That's a great name. Yeah. Love Dante's that. Inferno. He's going to be a <laughs> typical name. <laughs> Typical name. <laughs> Jay, you seem like a pretty tough guy. What scares you? Uh, balloons. Real balloons? Shit. Real shit. Whoa. Real, real shit. Like, I mean, what balloons. kind of balloons? Well, no, like, Wait, right. you're in the military, dude? <laughs> 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 Weather balloons, okay? I'll uh, fight terrorism as long as they don't have one right. balloon. Yeah. I'm out of there. If this is World War One, we'd be thought. <laughs> And oh my God. Surprisingly, the comedy store scratching their head on the Hindenburg reference. Yeah. Uh, our friend Bert Kreischer is also allergic or uh, scared of balloons. Like you blow one up, he, he freaks out. Has to where has yeah. this uh, fear of like? Where do you think that comes from? I was five years old. Wow! <laughs> Holy shit! I already, I already know Not even an um. I no. Have to, no, I have to explain this shit all the time because I've gone on first dates and somebody asked me like, a very similar question, and you know that's. Held five balloons, you know, my hand was my birthday, and then I let it go, and then it hit like one of those sprinkler things, and the sharp thing, and they all just pop, 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 and it just fucked me up for life. <laughs> oh my god! Whoa, that's a story you tell on a first date? Yeah. <laughs> I heard five loud I'm noises. I'm 34 and single, just turned. What's up? <laughs> wow. You sure the fear isn't coming from when you um, had un when you had sex and the condom broke? And you had your son. No, nah, that lost. shit feels <laughs> amazing. You know what they call that? They call that the Dante pop. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's listening right now. <laughs> Has there ever been a time where you've been out and you've seen a balloon and it like freaks you out? Like, yeah. it, really? Yeah. Is it ever backfired on anything? Were you ever? Have any of your military guys ever hear about this? They story? know this shit. They fuck oh. with me all the time about it. Wow. It's it's kind of a thing. Tuesdays usually. Oh. <laughs> and you're single, huh? Yeah. What's dating life like for a guy like you? Um, I don't do it. I rather I rather work. To be honest. Damn. I'm trying to hustle. Interesting. Yeah, you, know. you know what that's like for four not good looking guys? What? To look at a guy as good looking as you and know that you're just not interested? <laughs> what a oh. fucking waste. Oh, there's five people up here, so one, he thinks one of us is hot. That's cool. <laughs> and I'm assuming it's me, but I, we're all good looking, god damn it. I'm maybe not Red Band, but we're all good looking. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love you. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Aww. You're the one that's married. So, uh, <laughs> so Jay, like, what. It, what the most recent date that you went on you like working more than hooking up with girls but doesn't that ever build I don't up like, I don't you jerk off a lot no i fuck Damn, you gonna stick wet you know i fuck a balloon i face my fears i drive to utah i fuck a balloon how do you pick up most of the chicks that you hook up with um uh, very carefully amber alert cyber security does that ever come I mean, into like, play really, i don't know i just do condoms scare you? Oh, God. No, what, it's just what? like, I, I, I approach it. <laughs> yeah, that is I'm a great like question. I like to really go out on the date date, you know? Like, I don't, do I don't do, uh, do fake tits scare you? Oh, I don't Joe like, I don't like fake titties. All right. Why would fake titties scare you? Why would they? Well, they're balloons. Oh, oh okay, balloons. Also, condoms are kind of balloons. Yeah, I get it. No. Okay. 
So, okay. so if somebody blows up a condom and throws it at you, is that the same? Probably. Really? Jay, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, about six years. We're in all in Salt Lake City. All in Salt Lake City. How long have you been oh, here again? The wise guys, yeah. Yeah. Did you? Did we work together? Yeah, we worked or something? together. We, oh. ate, we, ate a, we hung out at, at, at a Mexican restaurant yeah, or something. Yeah, my pops, which was fucking. Oh, weird. that's right. I yeah. met your dad. Yeah. He, that's so funny. He handed me four balloons and said, "If you ever need to shake Jay, just wave this at him." <laughs> your dad <laughs> does not like you. No, he. I remember you now. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, we did. Well, Jay, it was your first time on the show, right? Yeah, I didn't expect to get up, and I was like, everybody back there heard me say, oh, shit. Dreams really do come true. There he goes, Jay Whitaker, Jay ladies Whitaker. and gentlemen. Excellent. Very nice to meet you. He's on Twitter. Thank you for your service. It's Jay Whitaker, W-H-I-T-T-A-K-E-R. Jay Whitaker. Well, I think he learned a lot about his comedy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricanes, how you guys doing over there? Ooh, frustrated. <laughs> I pulled another name out of the bucket. Here we go. Uninterrupted 60 seconds goes to Mary Bequette. Bequette? Well, I've been depressed, you guys, because I recently turned 50. Thank you. Especially because by recently, I mean, like, within the last 10 years. <laughs> My Facebook feed is nothing but fucking, you know, gravestones and depends and that female Viagra. Have you heard of that? That shit is dangerous. I tried it, like I slid right out of my car. <laughs> so I'm an accountant during the day, like at night I'm a comic. I know, I sound Jewish, don't I? <laughs> I'm not, but I do have a difficult time when I have to add things by hand because I'm missing a finger, yeah. <laughs> right, so like right away, the best I'm gonna do is like 90% accuracy. <laughs> wow. Mary, right? Mary. Uh, Mary, I, I, thought, I thought that was incredible. Give me four. <laughs> Oh, Mary, <laughs> the million dollar question. Let's just jump right into it. What I, happened to the finger? Oh, I cut it off with a table saw. Oh. Wow. Can we ask why? <laughs> Somebody was using the handsaw. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lesson yeah, you learn more. very good. I'm, I'm right there. Like, no, because my mom encouraged me to do stuff like carpentry, but I wasn't cut out for it. No, I'm Fuck. sorry. No. Oh, it was when you were young? It was, I was 18 years old. Thank God you're hot, huh? What if you were ugly with only one finger? You know what I mean? Yeah. She's good looking. <laughs> yeah, she's very good looking. Totally. I thought, that would, that, I thought everybody would have appreciated it, but everybody... Ever, I did not appreciate it. Do you, ever, do you ever... I mean, are there any gags that you can do with it? I do a lot of... Like, that is my funniest stuff. I was just getting started, you guys. It'd be really? Cool if you found a guy who was like really paranoid about like anal play, and then you're like, "Look, it's Whoa. easy. I've got one in there right now." <laughs> and then you're like, "Actually, no." And then you fist him, and you're like, "It sucks." No. No, he kind of he, he doesn't like you to put stuff up his butt. Oh, you're married. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How long have you been married? I've been married 25 years. Oh. Cool. Oh, oh, awesome. Wow. Did you do anything special for the 25th anniversary? Uh. She got she got the haircut of a Shih Tzu. <laughs> Ooh, that's an angry hurricane over there. <laughs> no, we went to Italy. So. Oh, awesome. Right. Oh, Beautiful. very cool. Is he here? No, he's uh, home asleep right now. Okay, so listen, I want to tell you a few things. Uh, no, I was just going to fuck with you since your husband wasn't here. I think you um, are, I, ca I, I can't get over that you're, I think you look good. I think Thank you look you. real good. Damn. You know? How's everything? There is. Um, RDK, Rod Dog Cash, we're working well, I'm just, magic. I keep thinking about that Viagra thing and... That little stream getting you out of that benzo out into the streets of, of uh, I'm going to assume, Studio City. and uh, There is something really hot about you. I can't yeah. quite put my finger on it, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> fuck yeah. You remind me of uh, one of my favorite books. Uh, um. <laughs> Because hey, did someone just order chicken fingers? That's, come on. <laughs> Guys. 
Oh, no, they're, no, they're, no they're, they're cutlets. Those oh. are just cutlets, Jimmy. They are finger looking good here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can put it up my nose. Like if I put my finger up my nose. Oh, that's Whoa, yeah, I just yeah, got a funny. boner. <laughs> 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 and there's, uh, there's a lot of upsides. A hand job, you get 20% longer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah, just, fist dog. Were you surprised when you lost your finger? How old were you when you lost your finger? She was surprised. No, I pretty much expected it. I've been using the table saw a while, and I was bad at it. I'll be honest. Hey. It was, I mean, it seems shocking. There's no way anybody saw that coming. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. But no. Okay, I have, I have two questions. Firstly, okay. they didn't reattach the finger. That's unusual. Well, it was a long time ago, right? And Did you just end up building? Saw. You just continued and nailed it right into something? No, it was a no. table saw, so it just went... No, okay. wait, why didn't did they you reattach keep... it? I mean, you're not that old. But it was cut up by a saw. You know how a saw makes sawdust? And... Oh. Oh. Okay, oh. Now, okay, second thing, second gnarly, question, gnarly. and you may have already Yuck. answered it in that detail. Did you keep the finger? Where is it now? No, they, they kept it. I oh, you should have had in a pouch like Davos Seaworth, you know? Yeah. On some Game of Thrones shit. Do they make like, you know, like little Play-Doh ones or something like that? Something for you to... They do, but I don't really want one. And then right. you, you, uh, you're you an accountant by day. Have you considered, and it's just a thought, but Japanese mafia? No. <laughs> <laughs> it feels I, like the Yakuza would really admire someone like you. I, I got I a real... Oh, you think that you get the finger cut off when you join the Yakuza? No, it's the other way around. You cut a finger off, that makes you Yakuza. Right. Joel Berg. I got a real question. Do you still feel like it's there? Sometimes I do. You have yeah. that phantom limb? Yeah, I do sometimes. And it like itches and you know, there's nothing you can do. I'm right, like that with my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I quite got an answer. How long ago did you lose the finger? Eight, when I was 18. So 18. Over 30 years ago. Gotcha. How long have you been doing stand-up? I've been doing stand-up like six years. You have kids? No. No? Do you have... Uh, uh, I don't know. It's analogous to kids. Cats, oh, good cats, one. Animals. That cats? was a really good first dogs? cast of a joke. <laughs> I had a dog, but I only have cats now. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, it all got rather sad at the end there, didn't it? Jesus. <laughs> well, it, it just wasn't satisfied with the petting experience, so it left home. <laughs> it's like one more finger. This doesn't feel complete. Thank you. Oh, my gosh, a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, uh, why is your husband already asleep? It's only 8.43. He's a chef, so he has to wake up really early. In the Where's morning. he a chef at? Uh, he's a culinary instructor at the Art Institute in North Hollywood. Oh. So he teaches oh. young chefs. Wow. Oh, wow. La, la. That's mm. nice. Does he make you dinner before he goes to sleep? Sometimes. I have to wait until I... I don't, I don't think he's good, because I think if he was good, you would be fat. <laughs> <laughs> he you is always fat. trying to make me fat, but, you know, that pisses me off. So. Did he like when you took the female uh, Viagra? He does, yes. Did it work? Uh, yes. Wait, what does it do? It just makes you horny? No. Uh, or it makes your dick hard? I don't understand how... It's, it's actually just, you know, lube. So. It's lube? Like Whoa, what a bait and lube. switch. Uh, lube is, uh, lube oh. is pretty fancy. I mean, I just... What's the matter with... I mean... <laughs> right. I'm on a budget here. Come on. Yeah, but when she does that, it falls right down onto the street. Because it's a finger. <laughs> That's, that's got a name. That, 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 that's called uh, Australian Charm. Oh, my God. Hmm. Do, you have, do you have any special hobbies or skills or anything that you do when you're not accounting or doing stand-up? I, I do. I'm a pilot. I have my pilot's license. Really? Oh, wow. Wow. Like wow. an airplanes? Yeah. Wow. But then before you get in the plane, that's how do you know which way the wind is blowing? <laughs> 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 yeah, that was brilliant. That's so funny, yeah. but also so crude because it's like like a pilot really does that to know. All right, let's, we can take off. I'm not going to use any of these meters today. I'm going to uh, go with the old finger wind test. What kind of plane do you fly? I just fly single engine. You know, warriors. They're as low. low oh, you don't have to tell us. Yeah. Is it like? Uh, is it like uh, John Travolta? Are you repressing homosexuality? or what, what, what? <laughs> How did no, you get into flying? Um, I just like, because it, you can really concentrate on it, so you stop worrying, and I can be really obsessive, and I like it, because I'm gonna, like, there's checklists, so you know, you can just be really careful, and then it's fun. I like it. Yeah. Have you, you ever, I mean, uh, another obvious question, have you ever fucked your husband in one of the little, those little planes? No. You ever put, Never? It, <laughs> you ever put it on autopilot? That would be dangerous. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you gotta you gotta get that those hours in so that you can get to an autopilot plane so you can finally bang that chef. You know what I mean? Before you go, can I get the digits? <laughs> oh, <laughs> all nine of them are. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> he could play himself, his own rim He gave shot. himself a rim shot. <laughs> well, Mary. Thanks. What a pleasure. You're, you're very, very awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we like that. Give her, give her a hand, everybody. Literally. Mary Bequette. At Bequette. S Q B E C Q U E T S Q. Follow her on Twitter, where she only has 139 characters she can use. Hopefully her flight manual is never missing its index. You know what I mean, guys? Sometimes I just can't turn it off. Hey, look who it is. It's Kill Tony celebrity Aphrodite, ladies and gentlemen. For you Kill Tony fans. Yeah, I like that. Fucking make some noise for Danny up there in the bird's nest, too, always. Always has our back. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Uninterrupted, 60 seconds, goes to Josh Sood? Suede? Sood. Here he comes. He, we got a runner. Come on, Josh. Maybe like... Thank you. So, <laughs> can you guys... Can you guys imagine, like, if you were if you were the first doctor, like, way back in the day, and you delivered like the first set of twin babies, you'd kill one of them, right? That's that's that would be the logical thing as a doctor back then to do. I think even the parents would be like, "Fucking Rochambeau! <laughs> first we gotta teach them. We'll just we'll we'll flip a coin." Ugh. No, someone. <laughs> Someone told me after I first did that. So, <laughs> can I just? That doesn't that sound like the aliens from Galaxy Quest that are like, ho ho ho. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> I found out that we actually used to kill twin babies back in the day. That's something that actually I told that joke and someone was like, oh, I'll have you know. But uh, and I was like, ho ho. ho. Thank you, thank you guys. 55 seconds from Josh Sood. I wonder, uh, I wonder what you would have talked about the other 35 seconds had Jimmy not laughed so aggressively. It's just crazy that your final punchline was a callback to Jimmy Carr's laugh. Yeah. I did not see that coming. So you, you, ha you had a minute and you, you thought dwarf, uh, like killing twins was the way to go. It's a, it's a really strong, it's an interesting choice. I like the choices that you've made. I don't regret it. Why would he kill the twins? Because uh, I, I feel like we were superstitious back then, right? We did when, when you say back shit. in the day, normally when people say back in the day, they mean like the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we used to do some crazy shit back in the day. I mean the early 90s. I mean the spin doctors were a band that was successful. We were, it was, they were crazy times. Remember we used to kill twins. Not right? 90 BCE. I, I'm not sure whether we did used to kill twins. I would... I think in China you still do. <laughs> if they're bought... Right? If, they're, if it's a girl, yeah. If it's a girl, you yeah. got to get rid of one. <laughs> um, so, uh, talk me through the, the logic yeah, of that. Exactly. I'm I feel with, like I'm we missed on this. Let's well, go step by know. step. When you say back in the day, when do you think, baby? When do you think twins Whenever the started? First set of twins were born. Take a guess at it. I want to hear your guess. You look. You have glasses. You look smart. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I don't like you, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> Because you're like good looking and muscular, but you're dressed like you are a nerd. And, and like as a person that is sort of enfeebled and beglassed, <laughs> I see that as a personal attack on me as a human being. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I can see your fucking big old muscles and your hot, thick dick from here. And it's like, <laughs> I appreciate it. Nobody appreciates You know what I mean? You know yeah. you're not gay, right? Yeah, no. Also, <laughs> I, I mean, no, I'm not gay, but if a guy, if a guy wears like tapered pants like that. No, I that, hate his pants. I yeah. hate his pants. He has no socks and he has a uh, taper like, like a raincoat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to his pants. I'm, I'm super interested in your. I would like you to write a book about the history of humanity, the the idea of the first twins. 
<laughs> are you one of these people that believe the world is like six thousand years old no, or something crazy? No, no, no. I just, I just. Can't so when do you think? The day. Give us, the... give us a year for the first twins. Go first ahead. Twins. Take a shot at it. When first they... twins has to be for it's. Like it's 5,000 BC? Oh. Ooh. It's yes. the most mental answer I've ever... Yeah. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. It's a true guess. Your knowledge of science. Do you work for Trump? What the fuck are you talking about? It's true. It could have been a worse answer. No. no. <laughs> there are no worse answers. And also the first doctor to deliver twins would have... Why would you kill... What's the right answer? Well, the truth is, the first twin probably came before the first doctor. You know, they probably didn't invent medical school, and then they were like, whoa, freaky. Can but I, I actually think, I think what's happening here is that you made fun of Jimmy's laugh, and he doesn't like you either. No, I, I like the laugh. I'm, I'm interested. If Moshe's racking up super points right now. Uh, I'm, you hear that sound. You know Moshe is a beating the game. I, I, th I do think the premise is actually kind of funny. The first time you saw, I mean, you have to suspend disbelief, but the first time you saw two babies that looked alike, but then again, all babies look alike, so it's kind of problematic. Yeah, the joke's bad. Isn't that the name of your show? So in 5,000, what do you think created twins? Like, what was the difference that twins just started happening in 5,000? Maybe I'm, the sun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when the sun was invented as well, actually. The sun causes most of the problems. Now, we know Moshe hates the Josh. Made the jizz expand. We believe That's that... twice the we have, a, we have a theory that Jimmy hates Josh. I'm interested to hear what Greg Fitzsimmons thinks about Josh. Josh could beat the fuck out of me. <laughs> so I'm going to go easy on him. No, I hate his pants. But I actually like the joke. I like the premise of the joke. I thought it was something that I could see happening like leeches and weird shit like that in medical history like I, I, I bought it I thought that uh, I thought that you could have gone a little further like maybe check a Wikipedia page if you're gonna write the joke <laughs> now Josh I want to cover something Moshe brought up earlier there's something extremely nerdy about you and there's also something like athletically douchey about you what is the crossover can you tell us some nerdy things about you oh don't, don't pretend like you have to think that hard <laughs> No, I mean, I, I played sports growing up, like in high school, but I What also, sports? Uh, basketball. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Quidditch. It's <laughs> <laughs> my boy Patty Reagan over there, huh? Whatever. <laughs> uh, whatever. And what okay. do you do now? What do you do for a living? Uh, I work for the studios. Oh, you do? I take it back. I think you're cool, man. Like, <laughs> I was kidding around. I'm looking for a laugh sometimes. No, but no, it's no, like... Moshe. It's Universal Studios. <laughs> <laughs> the Walk. I work for The Walk. <laughs> yeah. What studio? No, it's mainly like photo shoots and stuff, but I, I jump around from like the art department or I might drive like an RV, like a motorhome. So just... Oh, you know what? Go fuck yourself, man. <laughs> RV driving motherfucker. Back to douche town. That was that, you went from Mr. Hollywood to eh, a van driver so quick. <laughs> so quick. I work for the studios. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Hollywood. <laughs> Well, Driving a van. If you did something important, you wouldn't just casually like, ah, the studios. You'd probably yeah. say your position or something. Well, I, I think everyone, artwork. everyone bigs up their role in the world. I used to, myself, I used to work as an underwater ceramic engineer. <laughs> Washing up. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, tell us, uh, tell us something. Uh, how often do you work out? Uh, like five days a week. We're not, we're not on a first date, you know that, Do right? you look like... Why do you look like you read when you're lifting weights? Um, I don't... Uh, well, I actually just got these glasses today. Oh. They're like can, the can we see you without the glasses? Darby glasses? Wait, do you need glasses? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Hell yeah, you do. Oh, you're, you're beautiful. Oh, no, you're what, better um, looking without the glasses. Sorry, you... That's true. You just got the glasses today, mm -hmm. and you need them. So what was happening last week in your okay. life? Okay. But they Are, keep getting dry, and it's just a pain in the ass. I hate you can get attacks. female Viagra for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, grab the last comic and just squeeze her. <laughs> <laughs> Mary okay. won't mind. She's very yeah. liberal. <laughs> Mary's so nice, she'll even put your contacts in for you with her little nub, <laughs> just one at a time. <laughs> are you like a big fuck guy? You seem like you probably are. You're probably like a big like, time, like promiscuous kind of womanizer dude. No, not really. I, uh, my sex life is uh, pretty uh, not exciting right now. Oh, really? Oh, Wait. some girls are like available. <laughs> girls That's are crazy. moaning. Would you ever hook up with Aphrodite? You see Aphrodite right here? This big voluptuous... Uh, uh, 
Is that Actually, your type? I, I gave up drinking like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> that. Uh, oh yikes. shit! Oh shit! <laughs> I don't that know how Brian always has that ready for her, but... Uh, that is head and shoulders. Head and shoulders, the funniest thing you said. Yeah. Ah! Work out a way to make that into a he's joke. Like, that was brilliant. He's like, I gave up drinking like a year ago. You know, when the second twins arrived. Is that really true? Did you really give up drinking a year ago? Yeah. Why is that? Uh, I was just partying way too much. What happened like the trouble. night when you got yeah, your what, shit together? Rock bottom. We want to yeah. hear about rock bottom. Aphrodite, were you involved? <laughs> What did you sleep with a nine? I the last <laughs> night. I, I slept with a nine. I ate tons of carbs, and I'm like, I can't live like this anymore. I'm going to Urban Outfitters to get some fake glasses, frames, and some tapered pants. I'm gonna change my life. Are you in? A, are you in a program? What? Are you in a program? No. I, I in the beginning I went to meetings and stuff, but then I I like smoke pot and stuff, so they like aren't really about that at all. Are you um Are you aware you're not singing a song with an indie band right now? Arms wide open. Yeah, I used to smoke pot. <laughs> where are you from originally? Here, actually. Oh, uh, what do your parents do? Uh, my mom's a graphic designer, and my dad drives a van. You're about to, you're about to lie right now. No, he, he owns. He's like, a he owns studio like a head. Eyeglass company. Eyeglasses. Did you get your glasses from him? Whoa! You may know my father. His name's Oliver Peoples. <laughs> oh, Mr. Warby Parker himself. Is he a big eyeglass guy? No, it's like, it's a smaller company. I'm just not, not a huge fan. Why? Wow. Well, well, of people of your, of your right? father. What? That's the most understated family dysfunctional yeah. statement of all time. Yeah. I'm just not a big fan well, of my it's dad. Not, it's, he's not passionate about the frames. It's like you find a... <laughs> I'm coming around on this, dude. <laughs> you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my problem with you is you don't know why you're funny. Yeah. Yes. You, 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 you've said two very funny things totally inadvertently. Uh, he's not passionate about the frames. What's, what's your problem with your dad? I used to abuse me when I was a kid. What's your problem with your dad? He's not passionate about eyeglasses. It's amazing. What do you mean he's not passionate about the frames? It's, so with optometrists, like there's like the Medicare, <laughs> no. the, it's like the budget frames that you just get. So he, you find a place in like Hong Kong that sells really cheap frames, and you're like, all right, those are cool and trendy enough to sell to optometrists. Uh -huh. So it's just a business thing. Could, couldn't you have gotten contacts from him? What? There's no frames involved in contacts. If I well, he had contacts up what? till last week. If I if I oh, yeah. owned, oh, yeah, all right, take it back. All right. If I owned an optometrist, uh -huh. like a shop that sold glasses, I would make them do the shop sign in a really blurry font. <laughs> they do, they do. That's actually really popular in like optometry advertisements. What? Really? Wait, yeah. you wow. know so like out of focus advertisements? Oh, interesting. Dude, it sounds like you have an eye for the business. Oh, I'd, go in, I'd go into it yeah. if I were you. I have a question. Does your dad, how does your dad, you don't support your dad's eyeglasses business. Does your dad support your comedy? Yeah, what's his frame of mind? He snuck into it. What? Tony, congratulations. Come on, come on, focus, focus. No, he's <laughs> He's supportive. Well, hindsight is twenty twenty. so. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Huh. We have to. I think stop we this. lost them. Does your da does your dad wear glasses? Uh, yeah, he does. Uh, Is your, your dad available to do Kill Tony? <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably do it. Really? He might. Oh wow. Well, I'll tell you something. Passion. You got a lot. You got a lot to work against. It is hard, I think, to be good looking. I can tell you this, and go into stand up comedy. But you can overcome it. You can overcome it. <laughs> How long you been on stand up? Uh, about two years in October. Oh, it's m next month, yeah. Is oh. the twin thing brand new? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. No, 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 I'm not this. I think, it, I, I agree with Greg, it's a premise that could be really good. It needs to go more whimsical, but I think it's interesting that you did, you, you've been doing it for two years and you didn't, couldn't do a, mi a minute. <laughs> 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 but now that I know that it's a new joke, I kind of, I understand it wasn't, it's not finished. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I get, I get, one issue I'm having is just getting bored of my stuff really quickly. Oh, me too. Yeah, I'm not bored. <laughs> Wait, you get bored of your stuff? No. It's, no, no. <laughs> <laughs>
I think it's that, you know, I think that thing though of like having, I'm sure you have like a five minutes, if you've been doing it a couple of years, you have a great five minutes, like open with your, with your strongest stuff, work in the new one, work in the crazy killing children joke, once they've warmed a little would be my serious advice. <laughs> I just, I have trouble maintaining the enthusiasm with all the material. Yeah, so no, 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 what, what I'm work. saying though is, the thing that I just said, do that. <laughs> yep. And there he goes, Josh Sood? Is it Sood? Josh Sood, S-U-D-E. He's on Twitter at Josh Sood, all one word, S-U-D-E. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Live audience, you guys having fun out there, huh? <laughs> The number one live podcast in the world on a Monday, having more fun than everybody else. All right, here's another name. Put your hands together for Dave Yates. Yeah. Another human being. Here he comes. I just found out how old I was today. <laughs> I, I, I am accidentally sit on my balls years old. Yeah. That's 31, if you're keeping track. <laughs> and I know it's hard to tell, because I still dress like I did a kickflip in the parking lot. <laughs> I looked this way the whole time. But being 31, I don't have any kids, and everybody I grew up with in Illinois has a bunch of kids. I was talking to a friend back home. He's like, yeah, I got five kids now. And I'm like, you have five kids? Like, I haven't even loved five people. <laughs> How the fuck you love all those kids, you know? I was back home, I was found behind a minivan, and the license plate said, Dad of 12. And I'm like, that dude's pull-out game is atrocious. <laughs> you know? And I'm surprised that van wasn't heading to the lake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you guys are ooing in the back, like these fictitious kids in this fake van from Illinois. Thanks, guys. Dave Yates. <laughs> you know what? Hello. What's f so funny about that is it was like a prove out of Jimmy Carr's theory of comedy. Do a few good jokes before you kill the children in the joke, and it will work. <laughs> it works. You are welcome, everyone. You're welcome. <laughs> I thought that was great. That he's, he, what was the phrase? I always think with comedy, it's like sometimes it's about the joke and sometimes it's about great phrasing. And his pull out game is atrocious. It's just a, f it's just a great phrase. Thanks. <laughs> Did you see that in California? No, back home in Illinois. Yeah. Pay how attention to me. How long have you been in L.A.? Uh, since April. Since April. You live here now? Yes. That's very cool. You just moved here by yourself? Yep. Yeah, he, you just, he just had this vibe, didn't he, when he came out like, I'm a comedian. That, that was yeah. the vibe I got. Like, he was funny before. Yeah. What, what are you doing for a living? Uh, right. I got fired recently, so just Postmates. And, uh, Where'd you get fired from? Uh, <laughs> wow, a huge fan of Postmates over there. Uh, uh, it's the same was, person that was down to fuck the last comedian. <laughs> I, uh, I was working for a, a rehab center, and I had to switch my shifts to do some comedy shows, and they fired me because I switched my shifts. Sorry, and the real story is you sold them what? You sold them what kind of drugs? Uh, crack. Uh, crack. Crack, yeah, that's the thing. Real big back in Illinois. Wait, you worked in a substance abuse rehab center? Yeah. And so these were people that were just coming off it and like had to be housed? Yeah, like outpatient. So. Oh, you're not outpatient. sober, though. Yeah, over five years so really. Oh, yeah. really? Man, Whoa, but you still have the whole, like, I am a drug addict vibe. That's cool. Yeah, yeah oh, I no. saw what happened to the last guy, so I'm like, I'm not doing my sober <laughs> material. <laughs> no, you can, you can, I mean, you really stuck with the look. Thanks. Yeah. And I, I admire that, but five years sober is a, is a great thing. Uh, so have you got kind of obsessed by comedy now? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, it's pretty true. Like, it tends to be that thing, though, if you've got that addictive personality, oh, yeah, you find something else to love. It's like the only thing in the world where it's like you wake up after, like, like, a shitty night of drinking, like, fuck, I'm never doing that again. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. It's the same that. thing no. with a bad set, like, where you're like, I don't fuck, why am I doing this to myself? And they're like, oh, shit, I'm going to go try to do Kill Tony, you know? Oh, that's yeah. interesting. It's like you're still, you're chasing a good high yeah, all the no, time. No, I never thought of it like that. That's interesting. Yep. What, uh, what were your drugs of choice? Uh, I was alcoholic. I was still... Just straight up, no, no drugs. Seriously. No, I was like a garbage can. Like I would do any drugs. Oh, oh okay, <laughs> there we go. Uh, oh, just an alcoholic, like, oh, garbage so, can. He got, he got like offended. Feels... Are you fucking kidding me? No, <laughs> I'm a also... crack addicted piece of shit, Tony. <laughs> yeah. also, I'm, I'm, not, you, Tony I'm not sure about uh, Tony's line of questioning there. Of the, I was an alcoholic. Yeah, was that all? <laughs> yeah. That's now, does it. that? Is that not enough? 
Yeah, yeah this is the comedy store. You got to go deeper than that. Yeah. But but I have uh, I've spent some time in the program myself, yeah. and I found that a lot of people got their start in comedy by standing up and qualifying because it's the greatest fucking oh, yeah. audience in the world. Yeah, 100%. Is that kind of what got you started? No, I started like I started comedy as a way to curb my drinking. So I stopped drinking and started doing comedy. Oh, you know? that's cool. And then <laughs> you don't find it hard to hard to not drink while you're at comedy clubs all the time? Nah, man. It's just like I look at it like this. Like I'm just like allergic to that shit. Yeah. Know? Like I just don't fuck with what. What yeah. else have you noticed other than comedy has you know is something that distracts you from that that you're passionate about? Uh, music, like I, I travel around seeing a lot of live shows. You do? Yeah. You big you deadhead. Yeah. I see you got a Grateful Dead shirt Thanks on. Thanks for noticing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I always notice. I always, I usually I notice by the smell, but for you I notice by the shirt. You sing? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just a patron of music. Oh, gotcha. What other bands do you follow now that the dead is dead? Uh, Ween. Got it. That's a Ween song for those okay. of you wondering. Shout out. Anything else? Uh, about me, uh, I make and sell my own hot sauce. What the Ooh, fuck? Ooh, now we're oh, talking. Wow. Yeah. So, so do I, but that, uh, that's just bad, what I call my too bad you're sober now because you can make a run for the world's most interesting man I campaign. Know, right? What's the name of your hot sauce? Ha ha hot sauce. What's, wow. what's the level? What's the... I'm in. <laughs> I really like this guy. Yeah. I think He's I know cool. what you're selling after shows once you become a headliner. Oh, that's that a good idea. Yeah. yeah, fuck yeah. I saw that shit as a feature, I kill. What's the pepper level of this? Uh, I use the Carolina Reaper. So. Oh, shit. Yeah, but it's like I didn't make it so hot that you couldn't eat it because there's no repeat business in that. What so. what hotel bathtub do you make it in? Uh, <laughs> in Culver City. It's my like my bungalow house bathtub. Do you make it for real at your house? Yeah. That's so cool. Legal. It's not street legal. No, it's <laughs> not, not street legal. That's no, what you should call it. Approval and shit, so That's what you should call it, though. Not street legal. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great name for a hot sauce. Yeah. Right there. Sounds dangerous. Do you have any on you? Uh, I usually He's got some on the shirt. Trunk, but uh, I, you're I, already I, fucking up. All right, moving on. <laughs> Jeremiah actually bought a bottle from me. Really? I'll buy a bottle. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. No, I buy there all my hot sauce from, from white for guys, for sure. I go to the white guy first. I'm like, I trust this guy when it comes to hot sauce. Thanks. That's what, cool. What, uh, what are you afraid of? Uh, dying. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. Fucking Tony. What Fuck. do you What do you think's gonna? How do you see yourself dying now that you're not on drugs, you don't drink? So how do you think you're gonna go? Probably a car accident in L.A. You know, like. Yeah. What? There you go. We have that sound effect. Yeah. Um, Probably not. You never go over ten miles an hour here, so it's never that bad. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I don't know, my first two months here, someone fucking clipped me and totaled my Honda. Like, the first two months here, I totaled my car. Oops. Wow. Total the, total the car, lost the job, I'm just getting the one-year L.A. beatdown that everybody talks really? about. Really? How, yeah. ma how, uh, how many fingers did you lose in that accident? <laughs> Piece of shit! Yeah. Hey, who's the band, uh, how, what's the band you've seen the most times, and how many times have you seen them? Fish. Fish. Yeah. Were you in Were you in New York recently watching the fish mega shows at the the no, Garden? No, I wasn't. But I just was in Denver. I uh, saw them three times in Denver last weekend. It's so cool to see a band that many times that isn't good. That's yeah. cool. I like that. It's passion, baby. Yeah, that's true passion. How many times have you seen them? Twenty. Okay. Wow. Which is not really a lot compared to a lot of people. Good lord. But like how do you watch fish without being high? That seems weird. I like, to, I like to dance. Like, I don't know, like I dance Really? Can you show us? If we, if, we played some, uh, if we played some fish right now, would you show us? Oh, you? no. Yeah. Don't do it. Yes. Don't do it, man. <laughs> That's a little soft shoe. Oh, yeah. A little bit of soft shoe. Can I we, get why you were an I, alcoholic. That's, I have. That's awesome. Could dance, dance, I have a number of comments now. to make. My first comment there is, when you dance, your whole body is a question mark. <laughs> and it's asking, should I really be doing this right now? <laughs> well, you know I what people every say. Moment of that. Seven, you know, okay, that dance was awful. You know, no, you were, you were amazing. But you know that phrase, they say, dance like there's nobody looking. <laughs> we were looking. <laughs> No, no, he danced. You go by the phrase "dance like you've never seen what dancing looks yeah. like." Yeah, 
<laughs> the oh, only thing cool. missing was a cop and a taser. There. <laughs> you danced like a death. We live in the glory days. <laughs> no, Joie de vivre, man. This guy knows how to live. I think that's cool. I've been sober a long time, too. I've been, I went to raves for 10 years sober. I've been to Burning Man 20 times sober. This Moshe, can you show us your festival dance? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Don't make the same mistake yeah. I did. <laughs> well, I've been doing comedy too long to fall for I that. Know, I, know. I don't need these people's approval that much. <laughs> how long uh, have you done? Like, What's your set? Like, How long is it? Uh, in comedy or so? Comedy, comedy. Oh, I, I've been doing comedy uh, almost seven years. Yeah, but what are you comfortable with? Like, how, like what's your good, like, 10 minutes? 30 minutes. minutes. Uh, would you like to try out the Ice House this Friday, get some good luck? Whoa! Boom! <laughs> Dave Yates! Thank, thank you, Brian. Curbs is drinking this Friday at the Ice House. There you go, Dave Yates. Yeah, keep dancing. He's on Twitter at Yates Comedy. Catch him at the Ice House Death Squad Show, 10 p.m. at the Ice House this Friday night. That's how it happens. Dreams come true. One second, you're just a normal person in a bucket. The next, you're performing at the oldest comedy club in the world. The where Ice only House? one person yeah. has ever shot their one-hour special the, the on House Netflix. The, uh... One shot. You, still streaming. I thought it was... Uh... And it's still streaming, and it's still streaming. What do you, what do you think I thought, No, I thought you gave him a show in a strip club. I didn't realize... We oh, no, yeah, I, no idea. We are in for a special treat. I know uh, this young lady. I've seen her around the comedy store now for a few months. I do believe this is her first time on this show. Put your hands together for Leela Hart. <laughs> The long walk from the corner of the room. Comedy store, Monday night, make some fucking noise. What are you guys doing out there? <laughs> Already good? If you're wondering what kind of car I drive, you're right, it is Mario Kart. <laughs> Guys are always coming up to me, they're like, damn girl, you're fun size. And I'm like, really, fun size? You think it's fun having to sit on a booster seat when I drive? <laughs> the only thing fun about me is the fact that I can order from the kids menu and I can suck a dick standing up. <laughs> I'm 4'6", four, 4'8", four, with heels, about the size of an L.A. parking meter. People are like, are you a midget? And I'm like, no, I am Filipino. <laughs> Thank you, I'm Lila Hart. Lila Hart. Only 45 seconds. You even come in short on your time. <laughs> Well done. Tim. That was awesome. Leela, am I saying that right? Lila. Lila. Fuck yeah. One more time for Lila Hart, everybody. Yeah. It's your first time on the show, right? Yes, it is. That was good. <laughs> Fuck that, yeah. That's just a shirt, right? Yeah, it's a cool. shirt. Cool. But I, just, I just made it a dress. Yeah. I'm small. I've, yeah, no, I noticed. <laughs> that's cool. So, cool. what is, like, what is that? Oh, I bought this for Great you. question. <laughs> <laughs> he, hits, he asks a hard-hitting question. Yeah. It's a, just a, like, I guess it's a... Oh, I thought he was talking about you, not the jump. Right, I, I was. was. Oh. Yeah, no, I'm back to you. If, if it's not, if it's, so it's not a, technically a midget, like, what makes a midget a midget? What is oh, that? Geez. Oh, what is this, over the line? The fuck, Tony? What are you I talking think, about? Hey, it's hey, a live hey, show. Hey, I'm no. asking a I question. Think it's, I think it's okay for Tony to ask, because I think <laughs> he's one, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm above average height, Jimmy, but okay, I guess. Well, um, You're called transsexuals now, Tony. Um, okay, right. I'm, well, I'm yeah. not the kind of, well, I do a lot of midget gigs, and I did go to like a party once, and the guy was like, this isn't the kind of midget I order. No, the short really? story. The short story. <laughs> wait, 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 hold up. What do you mean a midget gig? You know, people hire midgets to like go to parties and stuff. And oh, for real? Oh, yeah, like. This is like, I'm dead ass. You're dead ass. That's cool. No, I, that's what you. I, I mean, obviously, this is only a minute, and you were you were very good. You had proper jokes, but For sure. I think that thing about this is what you need to talk about because it's absolutely fascinating. As soon as you walk on stage, everyone in the room is made of questions. Yeah, you know, it's like, like the booster seat, the driving thing. Everyone kind of goes right. What have you? Like, if you were, if you walked into, it feels like being back at high school. It's like that thing of going, tell me everything. Right. Tell me everything. Uh, you know, th this is uh, something you obviously you're kind of you know you're born with, and you 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 must have heard all the jokes going through. Oh, absolutely. 
But it's, it's cool that you're hot, though, you know? Oh, thank you. <laughs> like, that's really cool, you I know? mean, yeah, that's what's kind of interesting is I think when you see people that are different, a lot of times... Why is that funny? She's different than somebody who's... Oh, uh, you groaned when I said, what's the legal height of midgetdom, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> You call her a freak show over there, Greg. But that she's so hot that like most people avert their gaze if you're different, but with you it's the opposite. So you don't know if people are checking you out because you're different or because they want to fuck you. Right. And really, what is the difference? You know what I mean? <laughs> think about it. It really is an interesting thing because you do give off a very sexual energy. Like For sure. Theory. Thank you. I well, remember you the first day I met you, I thought to myself, wow, if I 69 with her, she could eat my belly button out. Uh... <laughs> Can she have that? You should let her have that. Cause yeah, you're not going to be able to use that again. Yeah, exactly. I think you might Take be it. able to. He's no um, <laughs> I got a joke for you, Leela. Uh, you could say, uh, if you're like, people ask what's the difference uh, between uh, me and a midget, because I'm not a midget, and you could be like, uh, well, I can't fit in the overhead bin. Or something like, you can't check. You can't I don't carry on. Uh, Layla, look, like I carry look on this bag eyes, bigger than a carry Eyes bag. this way. He is not helping. <laughs> That's a good joke. It, it is a good joke, and you can tell because of the crowd response. What's hey, some of bands 0 for 5 tonight. What is, uh, you notice... You know, de delivery's a lot in comedy, <laughs> but I, I don't deliver, you know? I just I'm Hurricane think, Katrina, man. for God's sake. Think, That's a great man. joke for Hurricane Katrina. Okay, man. tell us the, the weirdest... What's yeah. the most inappropriate thing a person's ever said to you? Yep. Um, well, oh goodness. A lot of times people just like pick me up out of nowhere, like they don't even oh, say anything. That's so me. crazy. Brad, and Brad rude. Williams, you know Brad? He's mm -hmm. a, a dwarf and he's a comic. And he's a friend of mine. He's a great guy. He said people. That's the only thing that annoys him. He doesn't mind any of the questions. He doesn't mind the teasing. He's had it all his life, and it's part of who he is. He's fine with it. But people picking him up, he fucking hates. Because well, it's saying to the person, "You're not a human being. You're yeah. a thing that I am to play with." It's, right. Yeah. It's, that's, I would never I, pick I, you up unless you said, "Please pick me up." And then my wife was like, "It's all good. Pick her up." And then. Yeah. <laughs> I'll if pick you, you up, I'll pick you up, uh, up, and then I'll put you down, I'll pick you up, and I'll put you down, and I'll pick you up, and then we will be done at that point. <laughs> and on an upstroke. <laughs> yeah, well, I imagine it would be exciting. When people pick you up, how do they know, do they normally just lift you like a kettlebell, something like that, just sort of just like that a few times, or? I don't know, like how you pick up, like a puppy or something. What's the craziest thing a guy's ever like tried to puppy. do to you in bed, like sexually, like what is that like? I mean, it's got to be different. Um, I would seem, you seem like you'd be a real little animal. I mean, sex is dope. I think. What sex is dope or sex it's is dope? Good. It's good with me. I mean, oh, oh, because, with you. because even a guy like me looks huge. Yeah, it's all. I've I've heard of a spinner before, but you're like a fidget spinner. <laughs> no, I mean, I approve of the joke. I think that was the you right joke. You notice I use the word fidget, fidget. No. Uh, Leela? Li Lila. That's Lila. what they prefer to be called, fidgets. Lila, what do you do for, uh, <laughs> are you a professional comic or do you do other stuff for work? I do digital advertisement on YouTube and Facebook. Digital advertising? <laughs> it's But what do you, I, I'm still confused about midget gigs. What do, what do you mean? Are you in an agency? Like, um, I used to I used to be the mini miniature Ariana Grande act at Beecher's Madhouse. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> the, sorry, the, you were the miniature Ariana Grande? At Beecher's Madhouse, yeah. I mean, I don't know what Beecher's yeah, Madhouse is, but I want to go to there. <laughs> what is Beecher's Madhouse? Um, it was this show at the Roosevelt, and then we had a bunch of like mini acts. So it's like Ariana Chica. <laughs> right, it's Ariana. It's the opposite of Grande. Forget it. All right, not a multicultural crowd. Sorry. Ari Ariana Tall would work better. So yep. the Starbucks. Yep. Venti? Venti, there you go. So would you sing or lip sync? I was just like a lip sync act. I mean, it was really strange, but you know what? Um, I just want to say, like, I do comedy so that I can spread awareness and talk about these things. Like, People used to make fun of me, and now it's like the ultimate, like, fuck you, because I'm on stage talking about it. Yeah, great. <laughs> totally. And I, and I just, I want to say to you that at this point, we're no longer thinking about uh, the fact that you're small. We're mostly thinking about the fact that we all desperately want to sleep with you. So yeah. in that way, we've broken through that glass ceiling. We you know? truly, 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 while respecting your comedy, cannot fathom how tight that pussy must be. <laughs> it's like a fleshlight. Um, so, on, can I ask about the, the comedy that you do? Because obviously, if you've got something like this, it's, it's an obvious kind of 
attraction, you kind of, you're small, mm -hmm. and you do jokes about that when you start doing comedy the first 10 minutes. I don't know how long a set you have now, but like, do you talk about other things on stage? Yes. But it's like, I have to start with that. 100%, you know? yeah. And I just get that out of the way, and then people like see me as me, and then I, I just answer all of the questions that anybody thinks when they first see me, you know? Okay, best question. What's the best question you've been asked? I mean, just like, what exactly do I have? I have a spina bifida, so I have like a bit where I actually talk about having spina bifida. Okay, so that, that's the most common question is, what do you have spina yeah. bifida? Okay. And what's oh. the bit? Do you want to hear the bit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we want to hear the bit. Okay, I say, um... Sorry, I'm just so nervous. Oh, don't. Um, Come on. Yeah, don't be all bent out of shape you... about it. Okay. <laughs> I, the joke is... The joke is... I say, okay, to be honest, I'm not a midget. I actually have spina bifida. And for those of you that don't know, it's a congenital birth defect. And most people with my condition, they can't walk. So every morning, I wake up so grateful for the doctors and the surgeons, for all the operations on me. To make it possible for me to stand here today so I can get hashtag blessed, praise Jesus, it's a fucking miracle. You know, and I like to make it very clear to any new guy that I'm dating, I'm like, yo, here's the dealio, baby. I've got spina bifida, but don't you worry. Everything down south that works just right. Maybe a little extra better, because there are things you can do with me you can't do with the regular size woman. Spinner. Sex in the backseat, forget about it. We could do it in the glove box. <laughs> Boom. Got it. A <laughs> lot of setup wow. there. Lo a lot of setup. Lo long way to go before we got there. <laughs> I would but just I cut straight to the we can do it in the glove box yeah. gag. But I, get, okay. I loved it. Yeah. I get what she's saying. She's got to like contextualize what spina bifida is and stuff. And that's part. By the way, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, it'll be two years. And have you done NACA yet? Have you done the college thing? Mm -mm. If you could, do you have clean stuff that isn't mm -hmm. about what I desperately want to do to you? Is it, do you, mm -hmm. because if you do, uh, if you do a five minute clean set and send it off to NACA, do you have a college agent? No. I'll connect you to somebody. Whoa. You're, 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 you'll make so much money. I mean, you'll just, you are who they want. You, you know, it's because you're funny, but it's also like, uh, uh, Moshe's uh, going to get laid. No, I'm not. <laughs> Natasha, I love you, baby. <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, what uh, is it about tiny women you like so much? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, 411 is boring. <laughs> Maybe we can shave a few inches off. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you would make so much money in the college circuit. I mean, that is, yeah. you are, you are, you are built for for that. You, yeah. <laughs> you are, yeah. 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 That, 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 Truly, yeah. You clean, mentioned clean. Uh, yeah. you praised Jesus at one point. Is that a, is that a big thing with you? I just like to do it. I'm but you're not. Are you Christian? Um, I would say I'm more spiritual, but yeah. Sure. Right. I would, I would take the, I mean, way. it's only my opinion, but I would take the hashtag blessed out of the set. Uh -huh. Because that, that, mm -hmm. kind of, that, I don't know why, but I kind of think, meh. Unless yeah. there's a punchline, maybe, don't say it. Maybe add a hashtag spina bifida. I oh, think. wow. Just, all right. Yeah, blessed is kind of over, I think. <clears throat> all right, well, <laughs> Lila. Well, we've reached the point of Kill Tony where everybody's too horny to keep interviewing. <laughs> <It's> not true. <laughs> I love how you think everybody's like so horny. Everybody's like me, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, and when you. I want to see your fucking web browser tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> it's just like, do you have a clean five minutes plus spina bifida? Hashtag blessed. <laughs> what kind of guys are you into, Lila? Um. I mean, you know, I don't really have a type. Really? You should. Your answer should be tall. Well, yeah, I do like tall guys. So well, that's me in that context, and I'm only five seven, so. But I mean, like that's tall to me, so it works. It's what I just said. <laughs> Is that? I. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the other thing, I'm just kind of, I'm interested in the stand-up set because that the, the as, as well, you kind of threw away the, I can, I can give a blowjob standing up, but the descriptor and the mime of that is kind of what I would expand on. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> mm. I mean, that's all what the podcast's about, isn't it? So, good luck. And before I let you go, let me ask you one more question. With those midget gigs, like, you've come clearly so far, you said you used to do midget gigs. That's what you called it, right? Mm -hmm. Now... Like, what's the, you've come far, you just killed on Kill Tony, you got a bunch of jokes, 
Moshe's hooking you up with a college agent, right? Yeah. Or at least he's yeah. going to try. A college agent. <laughs> it's just me in a suit. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. You know, we don't pay anything for the first audition, but this is just a tape to see if the producers like it. No, no, no. no, no. I, will, I will connect you with a... I don't know if they'll represent you, but I will definitely when it e comes e introduce to, you. When it comes to midget gigs, what was like your lowest low? Um, it was nice. This, this dude's birthday. Four foot seven. Oh, are you asking me a question? being funny. Okay. Both. Both. Probably. Yep. Um, it was this. Mm. It was the worst thing that ever happened to me. It was the Armenian, Armenian guy's 30th birthday party. Ooh. You could stop right there. We get it. That is low. I, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Hey, look, we had this girl jump out of our cupcake. No, but um, <laughs> he literally said to me when I got to the party in front of everybody, this is not the kind of midget I ordered. And. I want to return this midget. And he, and he That's a great title. That's no, a great title for a one-woman show. That and is and true. I didn't make the money. And if I'm that's, hang, hang on a second. Oh, yeah. if, that, if that's a one-woman show title right there, this <laughs> is not the kind of midget I ordered. <laughs> that is, when you do, when you do a one-woman show, that is what it should be called. That's yeah. the title. That's the whole thing. This I is agree. not the kind of midget I ordered. <laughs> right, but for you to do a one-woman show, you got to go twice as long. You know that, right? <laughs> Lila, you were absolutely awesome on here. Great stuff, great interview. Yeah. So open, Fun. so honest, so cool. There she goes, Lila Hart, everybody. Okay. That's like Aphrodite's new arch nemesis. Complete opposite of Aphrodite. Look at her. Whoa, Aphrodite showing off some cleavage tonight. No Allie Mikofsky. I believe she's out on the road in New York City this week. So we're going back to the bucket, turbo style. Sound cool with you guys, huh? You having fun out there? Guy with his arms crossed? Talking with his fucking girlfriend right now? Pieces of shit. Piece of shit audience. Ooh, this looks like an interesting name. Put your hands together for Jaloid Spencer. <laughs> to do what's happening yeah um had a situation the other day um where i realized that i'm at a point where i'm not the man that i thought i was i was uh doing a catering event going to the job this guy was behind me kind of like honking his horn very loudly while i was in the lift you know kind of wouldn't let me get out of the passage you know i was like dude what the fuck is going on so you know i'm in the back and i just like flick this motherfucker off you know what i'm saying like fuck you bitch you know i don't play that you know, and then the lift driver stopped and this large African-American gentleman got out of the van that he was driving. He was heavily tattooed. And I believe the first words out of his mouth were like, fuck you, nigga. And I was like, excuse me? Uh, I, I was like, what did you, excuse me? And he was like, fuck you, nigga, what's up? And I was like, damn, this, uh, th this wasn't who I expected to jump out of the, uh, this wasn't who I expected to jump out of the band. And I've always been a fighter. I've always been a guy that don't really take no shit. Even though I'm not like the biggest person, you gotta stand up for yourself. Always been a fighter, but I had to get to work. So I think that's it for me. You wanna, go ahead and finish it if you so want. So I had, I had to get to work and the cops were standing around clearly not about to help me out. So I was just like, listen, sir, you, you better be glad I gotta get to work. So I just ran the fuck inside and decided to save my life. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you should have ended it, uh, ended it on the cat. There was nothing. To, there was no punchlines after that. Hi, Jaloid. This Hello. is your first time on the show, right? Am this I is my first time. Am I saying that show. right, Jaloid? You said it perfect, man. Most people fuck it up, so that's cool. So it was a large black man that got out of the car. It was. It was very, very large. Very made me think. And you ran. I did. Once, like, I saw the cops weren't going to do anything because I was working a big event. There were some cops kind of standing there, and they were basically just, like, watching, like, look at this silly motherfucker. So I saw they weren't about to do anything, and I did run. I mean, slowly, it was, like, more of a, like, a quick Has any walk. When you ran, did you scream, did I do that, as you ran away? <laughs> <laughs> no, just, I should have. Just curious. Should have. Love your work. Has any... I should have. Have you got any funny stories? Any funny <laughs> stories? I need to come up with some. I need to come up with some. I well, that was, I mean, it was a, it, it's world. a nice story, but it didn't have a punchline. It didn't have a, a hook. I got work. How long have you been doing stand-up, Jaloid? I've been doing stand-up for about a year. Really? About a year. Where about at? Year. Um, I've been at the Pasadena Ice House. I've been at um, 
I've been at the Comedy Store before. The fact uh, that you called it the Pasadena Ice House yeah. makes it's me wonder how many times, times you've done it. That's already a mistake. Pasadena, California. You caught me in a lie. You caught me in a lie. It's oh, you lied? Is that a lie? No, no. I'm not. I live in Pasadena. If I'm you had to guess before. how many times you've done stand-up comedy, about how many times ballpark would you guess? Just name a number. It's under 20. There you go. It's under 20. It hadn't been long. Right. You know what? It's not how many times you do comedy that matters. It's family that matters. Family matters. I love <laughs> doing that. I'm with that. I'm with that. That was amazing. Yeah. No, that's not the right show. That's a different show. So, um, same show. Same same show. show. Are we gonna... Welcome to Black Friends. I did think it was an interesting premise of a black dude being afraid of a big black dude in, in traffic. There is some... Yeah. There's fertile information there because you know you don't present as like a tough guy. You know you got the glasses and the you know the like hipster the Urkel thing and like so like I wanted that I was like excited about and then it kind of it fizzled a little bit. There, but sure. I think there is something to something. that, right? Something. I think the shirt gives you some sense of his blackness. <laughs> it looks like okay. a close-up of a sickle cell under a microscope. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Wow. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. Jaloid, you look like Floyd Gayweather Jr. There you go. <laughs> I've heard that. Yeah, I actually went out there for the Floyd Mayweather Manny Pacquiao fight and I got some of that commentary, so I don't know what Good you stuff. just said. So what's the hey, let me ask you a question. What's the workshopped version of that joke? Because it is you're right, it's an interesting premise. You were scared of this guy and then you said, I've got to go. Right. Okay, we need more than that. Right. We do. What's a funny okay. thing that could have happened? It could be made up. It doesn't need to be true. It just needs to be funny. A funny thing that could have happened. I don't know. Maybe we could have, like, hugged it out or something like that. I need to do a better... What if you started <laughs> running from him and an even smaller black guy saw you and started running from you <laughs> yeah. and started a chain reaction all the <laughs> time? That That's could work. That could work. I like it. That could work. That's that Greg Fitzsimmons writer brain, writer for HBO's Crashing. <laughs> I can't stop. <laughs> I also was very unclear about you were catering and then you were in a lift. I didn't know the choreography right. a bit. And then the guy was in a van and you were in the back of a lift catering, but there was a... I was, I was in a lift headed to a catering event. Oh, no, no, no. I, I wasn't can't interested. hear this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just meant like it needs to be tight. Like, you know, why sure. were you in a... Who cares that you were in a lift? Unless it's sure. important to the story. Who gives a fuck? Sure. I was driving. I flipped the dude off. He jumped out of the car. It was a big black guy. I was like, this is not who I thought I was flipping off. I was. Exploring. I don't think uh, 20 spots in the comedy. I don't think the technical side is going to get us far with Jaloid. So let's talk about your real. <laughs> let's talk about your real life. Tell us more about you. Have kids? Ever been no married? No kids, man. I've never been married. I don't have any kids. You ever been arrested? I have been arrested. For what? A DUI. Ooh. Yeah. Pasadena. No, man. Actually, I moved from Atlanta, so I got a DUI in Atlanta. Gotcha. Thankfully, because I hear there are real bad laws out here. So. Yeah. How did Master Splinter feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Georgia Not cops good. are kind of tough. Did show. they uh, they rough you up? No, um, cops didn't rough me up. You know, it was you know, it was it wasn't a good experience. You know what I'm saying? But I guess it could have been worse. So you know, it wasn't bad. This is like the most racist interview ever. <laughs> so do you have kids? A lot of kids running around? Right, You've right, been arrested right. a few times? Did the cops beat you up a little bit? Did they throw you Rub down you on the ground? Rub Does your up. life matter, sir? <laughs> Did we figure out what you do for a living? I yeah, asked. besides, the, I serve in a bartend. That's what I do. Where at? Um, so I serve at LA Live, like downtown. Bartend down there, too. Oh. And, I, and I do some, obviously, some catering. So keeping yeah. the bills paid. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Man, I've been doing that for like... Seven years. Here in L.A.? No, I just moved to L.A. two years ago. Gotcha. Here's another really racist thing. Let's go. I can't tell if you're 22 or 50. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people tell me that. That's cool. How old, how old are you for real? I'm 32. 32. I right right in, in the middle. Yeah. Right in the middle. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> wow. So, so. Do you date a lot? Uh, yeah, I date a little bit. I, mean, I wouldn't say that's a lot. I get out. Yeah? What do you, do you use... Uh, <laughs> The internet to date, or do you go to? No, do you, I don't. I don't. I don't do any internet dating. No, how come? Um, I'm just not into it. I don't really think it's for me. I'd rather kind of like talk to somebody or something like that. You know, for real, face to face. Maybe you could try telling them that story about how you were in a lift one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's, that's like a like a I war know. of attrition, really <laughs> wear them down. <laughs> so you you like to meet them face to face. So like the last yeah. last girl you hung out with, where'd you meet her at? Uh, I met her at the after hours. 
the after hours. Yeah, so like all these clubs out here close early, like at two and stuff. So with the job I do, I get out late. So you know, sometimes we'll go to the after hours. Wait, is there only one after hours in Los well, Angeles? A lot. Oh, then why are you giving it the honorific of the after hours? It's like the club. That's just what we, I, I don't know. I mean, right. That's kind of where I'm being from, the after hours. Okay. So then, what, she's standing at a bar by herself, sort of, something like that? Or were you introduced by a friend? No, I just, like, started talking to her. Like, we were just kind of, like, hanging out, and she was with some friends. We started talking and exchanged info, hung out. You took her back to your place? Uh, no, not that night. You know, we wound up like meeting up later to kind of like hang out, went out for dinner and stuff like that. Are you like Christian? Yeah, I am Christian. Okay, okay. Are you, okay, I, I couldn't figure it out for a while. <laughs> no, because it was like, you got this edgier look and I'm like, but he's like so like, well, you know, just like, I spoke with her a lady, oh, as a lady, as a woman of God in the, oh. in the <laughs> loving frankincense addled bow of the Lord. Okay, okay. So you're, are you... I try not to be too predictable, you know. Well, what does your hand tattoo say? You have a tattoo on your hand. What does says, that say? Uh, it says, the devil is a liar. There you go, Moshe. Right. right. It originally said, the Jews are liars, but you had a... <laughs> That's cover. Left hand. Yeah, that left What's that tattoo say on that arm? On which, which one? Both of them, I guess. Well, I, mean, I didn't, I didn't see two at first, but... Uh, consequences, just... Bullshit that I think Just, so. they, The devil is a liar. What's the, what's the dirtiest lie the devil ever told you? <laughs> that Stefan or Cal was cool. A few, a few. You know. <laughs> that is the devil, right? <laughs> now, are you like raised with Jesus, Christian, or are you like, I fucked up, found Jesus? No, no, no. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like my family. My family was, um, my family was you know, pretty Christian, so... You know, I don't like go to church all the time and things like that. But I no, but when you do go to church, you dance your heart out. Oh, yeah. that's, hey, I mean, I like to dance. Is it one of those, do you go to a cool black church? Here, I'll try I it. Don't. Push them down. <laughs> I don't, I you know, um, you I don't really. What, go what are you trying to do? Let's see Thanks. if I could push them down just using my hands. So Stick with the soundboard, Brian. Stick with the soundboard. <laughs> oh, so you're not super religious. I mean, I believe in God, you know, but I don't like go to church all the time. I will go to church sometimes. You're not LA Christian. Religion. You're cri you're Christ-ish. No, I'm a Christian. I don't, I don't want to like... You know, I I'm think... Gonna, um, I, if somebody asked me that, I'd say it. I think if I had to say what would Jesus do, I think he would make up a punchline for that story. <laughs> <laughs> I feel <laughs> like he was a good yeah. storyteller and he would, he would, you know, cut to the chase Amen. on that. Yeah. Right. He drew. He might do that. Might do that. All right, Jaloid. Well... It's your first time on the show, right? Yeah, appreciate it. There you go, Jaloid Spencer. Jaloid, nice to meet you, everyone. Man. Thank you, guys. You got to get up more often, Jaloid. Do more spots. I guess you work at night. He's on Twitter at Jaloid, J-E-L-L-O. That's not a joke. Y-D. Jello, Y-D. Spencer. His Twitter handle is Jaloid, J-M-J. Lloyd. Quick shout out to the movie Ten Men, uh, directed by uh, Barry Levinson from 1987, uh, with Robert, uh, with uh, Danny DeVito, and um, and uh, and uh, uh, just check it out. It's a great movie. Fuck yeah, I like that. I like that. Are you broken? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we could do that. All right. This looks like an even another new name, I do believe. Put your hands together for Charlotte Keeney. Ooh. Uh-oh. Blacklisted. Charlotte missed her spot. Charlotte. All right. Is that her? Is that Charlotte? No. I pulled another name out of the bucket. Again, this looks like a new name. Put your hands together for Mecky Leaper? Mecky Leaper? I uh, watched gay porn for the first time recently. Uh, I don't really want to, but all my friends are these like, college bros. So they're like super jacked. Super intimidating, but also really woke dudes. So they kind of like bullied me into it. You know, they were like, come on, dude. You never watched gay porn before? And I was like, no. And they were like, come on, man. You never even looked at it. You never even clicked on it. What are you like, homophobic? I was like, all right, first of all, no. Second of all, that seems like a weird way to support a group of people. I don't... 
Like, could you imagine if someone came up to you at a party just like, hey man, I heard you don't care about Syrian refugees. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it's important they come to this country in their time of need. It's like, yeah. Well, are you watching them fuck? It's like, what? <laughs> what? It's like, hey man, I heard you're some kind of capitalist piece of shit and you don't care about small businesses. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it's an important way to grow the local economy. It's like, yeah? Why don't you jerk off my Etsy page then, dude? What's up? <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. How do I say your name? Uh, Mecky Leeper, you got Mecky Leeper, how old are you? Uh, I just turned 23, like two days ago. Phenomenal yeah. stuff, Mecky yeah. Leeper. Mecky, Philadelphia? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know you, I've seen your clips before. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I was supposed to open for you, like, two Yeah, yeah, ago. and I'm glad you didn't, based on what you just did. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, you're very funny. I was, like, almost thinking, like, oh, this is a ringer. I, he's, uh, he's super funny, I've seen your stuff before, you're, you're really good. You yeah. are, the, the Jews are proud tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But they're proud every night, but tonight especially. You had it right from the get. You had it right from the beginning, and you kept momentum the entire time. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, like two years. Wow. Yeah. That's, Honestly, just a, that's just a good bit, too. That's just like a bit you wish you had, kind yeah. of like. Yeah, yeah the, bros, the bros that are kind of cool. I mean, it was great. Fucking great. You seem yeah. fully formed. Thank yeah. You. Thank Let's you. just ask him questions about himself, right. because the comedy seems fine. Yeah. Um, what, what, what do you, how long have you been out here? Uh, like three weeks. Three weeks. You, you just moved here? Yeah. Wow, you're gonna be a star. <laughs> I don't, don't. I wouldn't go that far. I think be so. A star. <laughs> a I know it for a fact. He's gonna be one of those like fucking Big Bang Theory kids. I was, I was gonna say I've never been more attracted to a man in my life. I think. Uh, wow. Oh, Schulberg. Maybe you will be a star. <laughs> Mecky Leeper, you're 23 years old. Did you just graduate from college? I, I dropped out to do this. Really? Yeah. I think, you know what? Good choice. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know what you were like at college, but you're good at this. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be mecca fine. Mecca, lecca, hi, mecca, heidi, ho. You know what I'm saying? I do. Wow. wow. Maybe it's time for the hurricanes to b -b -b blow away. <laughs> I love you know why we're rough? It's because it's because we're like less experienced and we're with we're with some pretty big guns up oh. on the comedy stage. So whenever we say anything, we don't deliver it with the same confidence that we would if you, there were lessers <laughs> on stage. That's true. Well, the award and the award for passive aggression goes to. Um, <laughs> now, the first time I saw you, which was how long ago? I opened for you like a couple months ago. A couple I months ago, and I was just like, motherfucker, this yeah. guy needs to go to L.A., and you had a good attitude all week, too. You weren't a cocky little fuck, which you have every right to be, but you're totally like a chill guy. Thanks, man. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. But I yeah. did follow him all week. And fell asleep. Yeah. All right, Mickey, I don't like you, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, <laughs> no, I do like you. I, I think you're cool. I think we all are, we just fell in love a little bit. <laughs> you're good, man. You're good. Get out of here. No, 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 no. I want to wait a little bit because I want to find out more about you. You come up, you kill, you're 23. Let's figure out some stuff about your actual life. I want to meet you. Yeah. Tell um, us more about Becky Leeper. I, it's, it, it's kind of boring. This is it. I just do stand up. No, Aren't your on. parents teachers or something? No. Okay. Well, I mean, the bit that you probably heard is uh, my, uh, my family's Muslim, um, but I don't look like it. That's kind of the bit. Is I'm like surprised, but now I can't do it because I said it. Yeah. It's, kind of, it's kind of boring. Um, I'm just a young white Muslim in the opposition religion that is probably the primary story of our national narrative right now, but it's not a very big or interesting story. Nobody wants to hear it. Right. Are you a religious Muslim? Uh, growing up, I would like go to the mosque and go to church. So my dad's Christian, um, but I, not anymore, no. That is, a, that is a mixed marriage right there. That's interesting already. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, he, he, he converted to Islam to marry my mom, and then they moved here, and then he... Flip -flop it's like fuck that. I'm yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go to church. That's, Where's wow. that Urkel guy? I'm going that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what do you? What are you kind of drawn to? Because you got you got the choice, right? Uh, between the two of them. I mean. I mean, I, it's all made up. But which which made up do you like? Neither. I think because I went to both, I was like, oh, this is a lie. You're in yeah. Hollywood now, my friend. Scientology. That's true. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's a good way to go. Your, your stage name should be Jihad Moskowitz. But his dad's Christian, so what's a Moskowitz? Uh, <laughs> Jesus Moskowitz. <laughs> there you go. No. 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 Oh. <laughs> the That's a Christian I gotta Jewish guy. <laughs> That's the worst bombing involving a mosque I've ever seen before. 
Happy 9-11, everybody. Oh, yeah, it is 9-11, so are you, like, celebrating a little bit? It's a big, it's a big day. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. Yeah. Congrats, man. Did you Congrats. go up on the rooftop? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I just laugh and be happy. Mm. I, I mean, that's already, and it's, as, as you say, it's a really interesting perspective to have Thank on that. Is, yeah. is your mother, uh, what is she, what's her ethnicity? Moroccan. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. she's legit. She's legit. What cool. does your dad do for a living? Uh, he's retired now, but he used to work for, like, the state government boring test. Can I ask how your parents met? Because I would say, as a Christian guy in Morocco, right. to nail a Muslim chick, not easy. Right, yeah. that's true. Yeah. You got to yeah. get your under dad, that veil. Your dad is uh, a... Yeah. Player. Right. Yeah. Well, they, they both worked at the U.S. Embassy, and uh, yeah, like I said, my dad converted, and it was a whole thing. They needed to like you know, do that. I mean, that is there. that is some. Yeah. I bullshitted some women into bed before. Yeah. But that is above and beyond the he call committed. of duty. It was big. It's some James Bond shit. Uh, your yeah, dad I believe going. that God. There's only one God, but God and Muhammad is his only <laughs> prophet. Just give me the Did pussy. He... <laughs> Did she? Do you know if your mother held out till he fully converted? Do you know I, uh, any of the she, story? Yeah, she uh, brought that up like one time in passing, and I never forgot it. So, yeah, I think she's only ever been with my dad. Oh, what a trip. Wow. But, and yeah. did she wait until he converted? or? Oh, definitely, yeah. I think, I think uh, they, she waited until they were married. Wow. Yeah. And did they, they met in Morocco? What did they live? They didn't live together there. No. So it was when so. they got here. Yeah. And, right. And then they put the sign up on the bedroom if this bedroom's Moroccan, don't come a knocking, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was Boom! Motion, motherfucking cashier. It's just, uh, every, uh, it's just interesting. It's just, I just want to see you do longer. What's your living situation? You're here in LA. Yeah, I live in uh, East Hollywood, and like a, I have like a shared studio with another dude that I met on the oh. internet. <laughs> Who makes you watch gay porn? Uh, no, he's gay, but he's very respectful about it. Never forces me to watch. It. Shit. Oh, he's not like one of those gay dudes that's no, like trying no, to rape you. I believe. Yeah. No, I believe the phrase is he doesn't. Tip. He doesn't shove it down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. He's gay, but he's very respectful about it. He's not like a typical gay dude that's like always trying to uh, sexually assault you in the night. <laughs> Shared studio with a gay roommate. Is that you ever walk in on him doing anything? He takes his laptop into the bathroom, which I wish that he wouldn't. You, know? uh, you want him to just do it out in the open, or I, it's like feels like the same thing because I can hear it and everything. Uh -huh. But he doesn't. He doesn't have headphones. Not well. It's just like he just walks into this very small bathroom with a whole laptop. Does your shampoo not, bottle smell? No, no, it doesn't. But I'm what worried. are you paying in rent? Six twenty-five. You pay six twenty five to share a studio. Yeah, God, right. rent is fucking horrifying, man. <laughs> Now, I feel bad because, uh, well, I don't know if I should feel bad or you should, but I offered to be your mentor in Philadelphia. I just hadn't seen you yet. You said, I'll see you in the clubs, and here we are. I didn't give you my number? No. What a Wait, shitty you... mentor. <laughs> <laughs> also, I didn't even know that there was a mentorship program in comedy. Nobody ever, did you ever have a mentor? Uh, you offered to be his mentor. I did. Can I get in on that? I did. That? Right. But you know what? He'll be your mentor, but he's not one of those respectful gay guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> He'll force himself on you. It's more like a dementor. I, I put the men in mentor. <laughs> Mackie, I see it in you, man. I do this show so fucking often. I know when people are going to work out and when they're not, and you absolutely, absolutely are. Thank like you. You, have the, you have everything of a successful person. Mackie Leaper is yeah. catchy. Yeah. Everything. The look, you look much younger than what you are. Your delivery is insane. And it's all well written, at least the minute that I saw. I guess I what Tony's saying is that someday, and someday soon, you'll be splitting a one-bedroom apartment with yeah. somebody else. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be that. living in a, in a living think, room on a couch. I think I speak on behalf of everyone when I say very best of luck with puberty. <laughs> Thank you. It's, you're going to see some changes. <laughs> we can talk. There he goes, Mickey Leeper, ladies and gentlemen. His first time on Kill Tony. Just moved to Los Angeles. He's on Twitter at Mecky Leeper. That's M E K K I L E E P E R. We're right on the line. Would you guys, audience, do you think we should go to the bucket one more time? One more? Jimmy? Permission from the master? Yeah, okay. What Let's about the girl it. that we missed? Wait, so he's the master and he's the mentor. <laughs> <laughs> right, All right, right. Not a lot of people know this, but Greg's mentor was Jimmy Carr. No, I don't know. Wait, who's been doing comedy longer? Oh, yeah, um, 
by about 30 years, I would guess. <laughs> Whoa, Jesus Christ. More like 40. Yeah. I'm, just, 40 I'm just going on. How I, long have you been doing it? I've been going about maybe uh, since the turn of the century. Is that Jimmy's phone number is still rotary? Oh, God. 17 years. Oh, that's 17. not oh, true. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, really? Is that true? What? I've, I feel like I've seen you on my TV much longer than that. You're lying, right? No, 17 years. Oh. 2000. Yes. I'm just You're thinking of Bill Maher. This is not Bill Maher. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing it, Greg? 28 years. Wow. Yeah. Right. Fuck yeah. And you were in Boston doing the real Boston shit. Yeah, I had a good I had a good graduating class in Boston. It was me and Rogan started like at the same week. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, Bill Burr was right behind us and Patrice O'Neill and uh, Dane Cook was at the same time as us. Not a lot of people know this, but twenty eight years ago is also when the first twins were born. <laughs> That's right. First That's right. Twins. And neither of them had index fingers. I don't know if you know that, but they were born to a Mormon family, one of whom was Muslim, one of whom was Mormon. I'm just doing a whole round of callbacks. None of them funny, but all of them interestingly woven together. Monday night, you ready to go to the bucket one more fucking time? Yeah. I pulled a name out of the bucket, and that name is Tierney McCauley. The spin doctors, people. Um, my parents sent me to an all-deaf college. Yeah, I guess they were just like sick of listening to me talk. <laughs> but like the joke's on them because it was kind of the best place ever to go to school. You know, like none of the frat parties ever got broken up for noise complaints. <laughs> it was great, like it was, and we partied all night. <laughs> but like sometimes it was tough at the parties to tell the difference between like a cool new dance move or just drunk sign language. <laughs> People get wasted, they start signing all willy-nilly. <laughs> I'd be like, wait, are we dancing? Or are you trying to tell me I have something in my teeth? <laughs> Stop slurring your hands. <laughs> That's what happens when deaf people get drunk, you guys. <laughs> I, um, I dated a deaf guy too while I was there. And he was like, he was really smart, funny, hot, great with his hands. <laughs> his name was He was a really quiet guy. <laughs> oh. Tierney McCauley. Hello, Tierney. Hi. I, uh, I wish I was deaf. <laughs> uh, I do, no, no. The uh, I, I didn't get at the beginning of it. The what, I mean, genuinely, it's a true story. You went to a deaf yeah, college. Yeah, I did. Gallaudet I did. University. You went to Gallaudet as an undergrad. Um, I went as a visiting student, but... Over like a semester abroad yeah, with deaf people? Yeah, just a quiet semester. <laughs> Interesting. So you were one of the few hearing people at Gallaudet. Yeah, well, and you were just like, like You were just like tossing down that deaf dick or like what was the... Uh, Only two, but... You fucked two deaf dudes? That's cool. I never fucked a deaf lady. My parents are both deaf. Did so, you really? So I found your set incredibly offensive and insensitive. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I just, no, I didn't. I, no, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. Well, shout out to Peter Pan for this look that you brought to the stage <laughs> tonight. I mean, what the The fuck? hurricane blew back. Joel Berg. Oh. Got it. There it is. Finally. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Landed. Thank you. I needed this. Oh. Finally, Jose landed. <laughs> they uh, landfall today okay. in Key West. Okay. Trump says you can stay, Jose. Thank you. You, uh, you did your whole set laughing at your own jokes, which really bugs a lot of people. Like, uh, is this your first time on stage, or have wow. you been doing that a lot? Um, Red Band hates you. Yeah. I, I, I hate that. Like <laughs> You're doing a lot of Peter Pandering. <laughs> Peter That's Pandering. Good. Very That's good. good. He's back. <laughs> Wow, okay, he, just, he, got, he just barehanded his symbol for the podcast yeah, he listener. Got, he got overconfident. I think it's. Uh, I, I didn't. I liked it, but the. Uh, I didn't believe the opening. So it I made agree. It, it made it made it all. It all sounded made up because you were doing gags about it. But I needed a tiny bit longer on the. I genuinely went to a deaf college. You have to say the words Gallaudet University. Okay. I went to Gallaudet, so the people, even though they don't know what that is, will go. That must be real. I know it doesn't matter if people know the reference you're referencing. They'll just be like, it oh, it, it must be true. Yeah. And your, your parents presumably sent you there as a gag. 
<laughs> They're funny people, right? They went, this is gonna, let's fuck with her. Let's, no, no, give me the application, like, let's cross that out. I've got an idea. <laughs> no, I chose to go there. And it's true, you really hooked up with the deaf guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did, did he, uh, did he braille you? He's deaf. Hey, he's deaf. Blind people. Deaf. Oh, they right. don't use braille. Hey, Tierney, you got Wow. I can't racist. believe I did that. Tierney, you got to watch okay, so, out around. You got to so, watch out fucking a deaf guy. You could get hearing aids. <laughs> I could get... Uh, can I ask why you good. chose... I don't I want anyone to think it's good. Culture. Wait, say it again. Yes, why I went there. And you love deaf culture? Well, normally oh, so you're like a deaf wigger. That's interesting. <laughs> That is <laughs> That's cool. But normally there's a, normally I find people. I was studying people. sign language and I wanted to maybe study interpreting. So I went there to see if I would go to grad school there. Now, why did you, why do you do the part of the bit where your parents sent you there? Just like to get into that I went to that school. Why don't you just say I went to it? That's actually less people words. like, why? <laughs> well, and then I, you say why. I mean, yeah. That's the thing That's about so stand-up. <laughs> right. That's, okay. I'm just, I'm not even trying to insult you. Okay. I, I'm, I'm like, why are you, are, how are you, are you very young? How old are you? Yeah, I'm young. How old are you? 27. Oh, you're not, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. Yeah, that's 27. No, I'm just saying, like, why are your parents involved in this? Like, your parent, like, what do your parents have to do with it? I, I went to, I went to school. I went to Gallaudet University. I, I, I'm not trying to berate you. I, I, I think that, um, you're very. How do you make a living? <laughs> I'll, I'll save you. I'll save you, Moshe. I do, have, I do event production. What? Event production. I don't believe event it. Event production. What event kind? Production. Like what kind of events? Like parties. Like what kind of parties? Um. For the deaf. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like corporate events. It's not that fun. Sponsored by Def Jam. Why did? Uh, <laughs> why? I work. <laughs> why didn't you? Uh, why didn't you become an interpreter? Um, it, honestly, like, <laughs> it was giving me a lot of, like, headaches, like migraines. It was giving you migraines? Yeah, it's really hard. It's, it's really hard to, like, think in, like, in two languages at the same time. I was bad at it, really. Oh, you were bad. Yeah. It's a good comedy job. That's my, that's what I did for a living until I quit to become a full-time stand-up was I was an interpreter. Is that true? For many, for many years, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. For, since from when I was 17. Uh, to You're a coda. I am a coda. I'm a child of deaf adults, as, as they oh, call it. Moshe, yeah. can you interpret her outfit? <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a pretty good job. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It would be something like this. But um, no, I'm kidding. Your outfit looks good. You, you look good. You look good. You have a bruise on your leg, and I was looking at it a lot. What's What, what happened? I just uh, slipped. You slipped. Down oh. some stairs. Oh, really? Oh, uh-oh. Are you okay? It sounds, more like a doorknob. <laughs> it sounds more like a slip of the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. She said, oh, this sucks. Where are you from? Florida. Ooh. Uh, oh, my God. Okay? I've got Did bad news. Yeah, I just got back on Thursday. I thought you were from Kent Heary, Indiana. Sorry. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Kent Heary, Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Take it with you. Take your stool. Uh, all right. So you're from Florida. How long have you been here? Since February. February. That's fairly new. Are you also sharing a studio apartment with a gay guy? No, I live with a couple. You're with a couple? Wow. In a studio That's apartment? That's deaf people? <laughs> In a normal house. That is progressive. <laughs> I have some questions about sign language. I know some people, uh, I used to do shows in Edinburgh and they, they would sometimes do a gala and they'd invite, they'd say, well, deaf people can come along to the show and we'll just have a sign on the corner of the stage. And I always noticed that the weird signs, signs are very kind of direct. They have like very odd signs for like, different races. I, I know this for... Yeah. They were very on the nose, but also like the sign for oral sex was exactly what you think it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? I actually have an experience so with this. So I was doing jokes, I was on stage and I was just, because the sign was there and she was kind of hot, I only told jokes about blowjobs. <laughs> because I, I just enjoyed watching her go. One time in Indiana, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, I was opening for Joe Rogan at a place called the Murat Theater, some crazy 4,000 seat venue. And in Indiana, they have a state law to where they have to have a sign language person. If I learned it's this big enough, fact. you mean? Yeah, and, and, it's, and they have to be lit up, they have to be next to the stage. I couldn't believe it. I, you know, I like finding any excuse to not do my material in the first place. Uh, well, it obviously is. Exactly. So, 
I see this guy, and this, I think it was a lady actually, <clears throat> and I did. I was making a blowjob joke, and I just so happened to be looking at her when she did the blowjob I like the eye contact. And they stay, yeah. and they stay completely professional. They don't smile at all. It's all very, very, very yeah. fucking serious. So what I did was, I literally go, blowjob. And then I'm like, wow. And it's just killing, by the way. And then I go, blowjob again. And she keeps doing the same thing. And then I said, black blowjob. And she literally was like, it was like a trombone all of a sudden. <laughs> literally. The place was fucking... I buried myself because it happened 12 minutes into my set and I had <laughs> nothing funnier than that to go Tony, to. did you just find out she it's, played trombone it's, it's in quite college? Interesting, that... um, it's quite an interesting thing though to get, I, I always think the detail is the thing. <laughs> like if you're going to talk about being an interpreter of sign language, get into the detail of it and the true detail of it is always more interesting than the, you know, it's more believable. I'm not an interpreter because I wasn't good at it. Not... <laughs> right, but you I went was. went to college for it. And what you... are you good at? Um, apparently not comedy. Oh, oh Trump that's <laughs> not true, tyranny. <laughs> tyranny. <laughs> um, I'm good at event production. Really? Yeah. Can you give us an example of an event you produce that you're proud of if you're good at it? Um, yeah, I just produced like a series of six events for the Gym Equinox for their Summer On campaign. It was really fun. And all the events went really well and the client was happy, so I think I'm good at it. Do you love comedy or do you, or are you just sort of hobbying? No, I love comedy. I, I do event production because comedy doesn't exactly pay for anything. How much Wait. money can you make uh, doing events in a year? It depends. Well, I'm kind of just started doing that because... So I, what about 30, 30 before you were Before you were Peter Panhandling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. What was the question? So about $30,000 a year? Oh, probably less. I don't know. Wow, it just that's... depends on like the event and the client. So like 20, 25? I hope, yeah. <laughs> so maybe maybe next year like 30? Maybe. We'll see. Okay. How many, depends on how many lost boys you find. Exactly. <laughs> You're not m making much money, which reminds me that right now, MeUndies has an exclusive offer just for my listeners. Get 20% off your first pair and free shipping. That's of of Walter? Me undies. Yeah, it's a hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. You can just ship it back if you don't like them. You know, if you go amazing. to meundies.com backslash kill right now, you get twenty percent off, free shipping, and satisfaction guarantee. You could return. They, they, you could return the dirty underwear. Yeah, they, and they sell them refurbished probably somewhere in China. For extra, double the price. <laughs> is it is it like a boxer or is it like a brief? It's like a boxer brief. They have five different kinds are you, of styles. Are you, I, mean, if, I presume if they're sponsoring your show, you are wearing these right now. Yes. Not even a sponsor. I just really like the product. <laughs> Tony, you are wearing them. Though. Hashtag ad. Who's, who has them on? Tony has them on. I have, have them on. I have, I have them on right now. Well, I, would, I would like to see. <laughs> I'll show you backstage afterwards. No, I want to see right now. I want to see right now. Oh, no, also. Brian, oh. please. Don't. Any physical jokes with you are so gross. Um, Tierney. So, all right, well, it was fun meeting you. I remember, um, I remember there was once a sign language interpreting gig. Part of the thing with being a sign language interpreter is that you go, and if the client doesn't show up, you leave after a half an hour, and so you get to get paid for the day, and you just you leave after half an hour. And, and one time I had a whole day of classes at this community college, and I went to the first class that day was a nude figure drawing class. And I was the interpreter, and I just showed up, I sat in the front row for half an hour facing the, the nude figure drawing lady, no easel, no drawing material, and then after a half an hour just stood up and walked out. I always wonder what that lady thought. It was just like, nah, I'm not drawing this shit. I'm fucking out of here. I thought of another question I want to ask you. Hooking up with the deaf guy, did you notice anything different or anything like that? Um, yeah, they, they make different noises than hearing guys. Oh, yeah? Like what? Can you do an impression of them? As loud as you can right now, no. please, for the love of God. Come on, don't you want to know what it feels like? To, don't you want to... Like, if you don't know the noise you're making, it's going to sound different. And, like, guys are clearly curating the sounds they're making while they're fucking. And, like, these guys are just... Well, also, the, the great thing about making out with a deaf gum, I mean, you've got, you've got freedom to queef. That's true. That yeah. true. Free to queef. Right. Freedom you know, to queef. You can, just, you can just relax. You don't need to be conscious about that. Yeah. And then interesting, speaking of queefing and deaf people, an interesting fact about deaf people is I have never met a deaf person that 
hides their farts. I, every deaf person I know, my mother or my stepmother included, just fart open yeah. willy nilly. All, all I've never not known a deaf person just <laughs> fart because it's like they don't hear it, so it's not like reaching their. They know that hearing people think it's embarrassing, but they don't have the visceral experience of it to be embarrassed. So they're just like, "Fuck it, I'm a fart." Imagine that freedom. Wow. On 9/11, wow. today is 9/11. Exactly. Imagine that level of freedom, guys. Right. Wow, that's, that's, saying, love. that's genuine. That's kind of. Brilliant. I get, yeah. I get that they don't have hearing, but do they not have a sense of smell as well? They know, but what I'm saying is, like, for us, there's we, the, our culture, hearing culture, has decided that like that sound is funny, right. and and that's what makes us embarrassed to do it in public. But they don't have that sound. They know that it's like farting. They're not like dumb, but uh, some of them are. But uh, but they're just like they can't be bothered to be embarrassed by it, so they just that's fart. Hilarious. They just, you they, should do a bit about that. Deaf really people funny. be farting. It's yeah. true. <laughs> Tierney, what's the what, <laughs> what's the most fun thing you've done since arriving in Los Angeles in February? Um, killed Tony. Killed no, uh, that's not the right answer. No, what have you done for fun in Los Angeles? Um, I mean, I try and get to the beach as often as I can. That's like my go-to fun thing, I guess. That's I try fun. Try and get out on boats as often as I can. Try and meet people who have boats. And oh, you, yeah. you, you hang out on She's boats. Not, she doesn't plan on like being Captain. an event producer for people long. People have boats and get invited on them. She's trying to marry a rich guy. I guess is what she's trying to say. How do you guys got a boat? Either. Do you want to go out on my friend's boat? Sure. All right, give me your number. I'll give it to him. Greg. Wow. I wow. swear and to then, God, my and then, has got a boat. And then at the end of it all, Tierney, when you put on the hat that Greg is wearing, you <laughs> can fly away magically. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's all part of the same outfit, no? Here, Captain, all right. Captain Hook has a boat also. <laughs> He'll love that. <laughs> oh, that's great. He'll and love the good thing about, about Greg having worn it, you know he doesn't have lice. Well, he'll love that your punchlines never, never land, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there she goes, Tierney McCauley, ladies and gentlemen, episode 229 of Kill Tony. 229, four years, three months, 229, hour and a half, commercial uninterrupted. Look at that drawing from okay, Ryan J. Belt. Me hung upside Dave? down. Oh. Me upside down over a, uh, a jack o' lantern. Can we plug dates? Plug it. Oh, September 21st, I'll be in Washington, D.C. at the Improv. I'll be at the Nashville Zany, September 28th to the 30th, and in La Jolla, November 3rd to 4th. Charlotte, North Carolina, November 16th through 18th. Come see me. You're in La Jolla the week before me. I'm there the week after you. Come see both of us, La Jolla. Well, that's my favorite. I love that fucking club. Me too. I haven't been there in way too long. Leave something fun in the condo for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave yeah. something fun in oh. the condom for you. Oh, how dare you. Make some noise for the great Jimmy Carr, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate it. You got anything you want to plug or anything to the millions and millions of Kill Tony fans that I, are listening live I right now? I genuinely now? don't need this. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. If you could plug us on some of the stuff that you do in the future, that'd be great. That could be the That's plug. also not happening. <laughs> The great Greg Fitzsimmons, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Thank you. I always need the support of the Kill Tony people. I will be at the San Francisco Punchline September 14 through 16, and then in San Diego uh, September 21 through 23, and then also dates coming up in Cleveland and Spokane or Spokane? Spokane. Spokane? Spokane. Spokane. Yes, I'll be yeah. there also. Fitzdog.com for details. Fitz Dog Radio is the podcast. I just worked with great Fitzsimmons on the unbelievably awesome HBO show Crashing, in which I'm going to be making a special appearance on season two. Tony did fucking awesome. He can act. This kid can act. I'm really, really excited yeah. uh, about it. That's the uh, season finale. But watch the whole season of Crashing, an awesome show with our friend Pete Holmes. Uh, Reagan and Jimenez down there. Look at them. Pat Reagan has a new album out, Bad Chat, that's available on everything. Joel Jimenez is on Twitter at Mostly Sorry. What did I miss? Uh, I, I want to give a listen to Mozart's Requiem. Uh, it's really great. It's, just, it's, it's made a lot of best year end best lists, so check it out. There you go. We got a Snapchat show coming out, Comedy Central Snapchat. Me, Pat, Brian Moses, John Shevsky. Look for it. All the, It's called all Void. Fuck off. All right, peace. I love you guys. 
I love that. Don't forget, we're in Boston next week next doing week. this show. Episode 230 of Kill Tony is going to be there then. Don't forget to sign up for uh, DraftKings. Come see me in La Jolla, Cap City in Austin, Texas, Denver Comedy Works, and so many other fun places. Hey, and I'll be in uh, Indianapolis at Morty's on November 8th and Columbus Funny Bone November 9th and the New York Comedy Fest. The game inside the game. You could win $100,000 in total prizes this Sunday. That's promo code CHANT, DraftKings.com. Thank you, live audience. Have a good night. We'll see you on the patio.